Yeah. All right. So in theory, uh, we should be live now. So. Uh, yeah, I see it. Yes. Okay. Good. I see it. Yeah. My my camera. You does see look how really it looks bad, it. right? It looks really. It's it's like it's very blue. Yeah, very but look cold. how cool mine looks. And yours uh, probably cost talking? a lot more money. <laughs> I'm guessing. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Um, I can. I'll try and fix it throughout. I mean, I can do it. You know, I I think I need to make a little. Yeah. A little uh, warmer here. I can probably fix that. I'll I'll keep an eye on it. Yeah. Hey, sorry. Well, while you're messing with that. Uh, I just want to say quickly uh, to, in the chat, who is it? Oh, yeah, Dump and Chase. Uh, Dump and Chase asked, does anybody know if a retro Tink 2X is the right thing to connect my Super Nintendo and Nintendo to a modern TV? Uh, yes, that will work awesomely. Uh, the only thing I would say is um, I personally would wait until he releases the 5X yes. and see how much it is. Like, I have no idea how much he's going to charge for it. Yeah, I don't know how much it's going to cost yet. Um, but, but it seems like it's going to be a dream come true. Yes, I it, may it, or may it, not it, know that it's an awesome device because of reasons. Yes. Yeah, yeah, same, same here. I might, I may not, I might know, and I might not know. Yeah, but okay. I think that, that if you out. are considering getting that, yeah, uh, I don't know what the the retail price is is going to be. Yeah, I mean the two I, X's I are very cool, but I'm just saying like. Might be worth. It's very possible that, that the five X could be like the end game for ten eighty p scalers. Yeah. Yes. Like the last upscaler you may ever need to buy, unless you're trying to go up to four K or something. That's right. Yeah. All right. So shall we uh, get started here? Yes. Yeah. We yeah. we've delayed this for far too long. I have to say. And I'm, I'm excited to see. Yeah, for I'm sure. This this is one. actually, like I said in the title uh, of the stream, this is actually my March uh, issue. So I've had it for almost a month. Uh, and we just didn't get around uh, to, you know, it. it's hard enough for me to find time to do something. But, you know, we, <laughs> we like doing these things together. So we have to find a time that mm -hmm. works for both of us. So um, and uh, so I already told you this, Corey, but I guess people maybe don't know. But uh, well, you can kind of see up here. So I already opened it. Uh, this time mm -hmm. I didn't actually look at the magazine. I mean, I, I didn't open the magazine and look at it. I, I opened it and looked at the cover, uh, just because I decided that if it was another sort of magazine from the same era as the last two, I was going to pick something else, uh, right. for us to read. And I mean, and just to be clear, cause I know, I think I get a little bit grumpy on the streams when, when I get those magazines, uh, it's not like it's the video game history foundation's fault or anything. I mean, that's what I signed up for. And if it wasn't for the fact that I was doing these videos, I would be happy to get those uh, magazines. Yeah. It just it creates an awkwardness for me because I feel like I don't know what I'm talking about. So anyway, I opened this magazine. Uh, or, yeah, opened the envelope rather. And uh, I think this is a pretty cool one. So I'm excited uh, to check this one out. So this is actually the magazine that I got. I didn't like sub in something else. Uh, that being said, I don't I don't know what's going on. I don't think that Frank's watching the stream tonight, but I don't know if you guys are like running out of uh video game magazines like i was very happy to get what i got here but uh just because it's a personal interest of mine i don't know how happy other people would be but i'm excited to talk about <laughs> it uh because they sent me uh the march 87 issue of stereo review which uh <laughs> it's pretty sweet uh no i'm just i'm, I'm of course joking um although <laughs> Uh, this issue has a very good, uh, buyer's guide for blank tapes. So anyway, all right. Uh, it would have been me. funnier if it was an adult magazine, but anyway, um, yeah, it's a late April fool's joke. How about that? All right. So I'm not going to do some crazy reveal here, I guess. I'm just going to take it out. But so what we've got here is the uh, December 1995 wow. issue of EGM2. And um, Interesting. I'm, I mean, I, I will say I, I'm not excited about the cover story just because I don't really care that much about Donkey Kong Country. Um, but I'm just excited about this time period because, of course, uh, December 95, this, this would have been like the Christmas issue, basically, of EGM2. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this was the year that both the Sega Saturn and the Sony PlayStation came out. So, um, so I only say I'm not excited about the cover story just because like, I'm more excited about the potential for some the early, and... yeah, yeah. So, uh, and yeah, I mean, you see up here, they even tell you, you, you know, Warhawk, Twisted Metal, 
Uh, well, Breath of Fire for the Super Nintendo. I don't know what Captain Quasar is. Oh, there's Loaded. That's one of my uh, favorite uh, PlayStation games. So anyway, so yeah, see, I haven't that's broken the one. seal, so I have not read the magazine yet. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot of fun. I mean, this is EGM2. I only really read, I feel like, the first maybe issue or two. So a lot of the sec the sections in EGM2 are going to be unfamiliar to me. Oh, same here. Yeah, I don't I have a whole lot of experience I with EGM2. I cannot believe that they were able to crank out so many magazines on a monthly basis. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Oh, uh, Cody Sandusky in the chat says, uh, all things considered, I would have enjoyed the Stereo Review magazine. It's funny. I actually, part of me kind of thinks it would be cool to do a read through of that, like on this channel. Uh, it would be. Sometime, just because it's, you know, it's a lot of like higher end stereo equipment from the 80s. And who doesn't want to check that out? Uh, yeah, maybe I should. I, I think it's funny that you're, you're buying those magazines, though, now. Yeah, and that was not cheap. Actually, the reason I bought that, not to derail things too much, but um, I wasn't kidding. It has a blank cassette tape buyer's guide in it, and so it has mm -hmm. the list prices of all these cassette tapes from back then, uh, which is not easy information to find, actually, um, <laughs> just because I've been buying a lot of blank tapes, and I'm always kind of curious, like, well, how much would this have been back then versus, you know, versus something else? Um, right. But, yeah, anyway, we don't need to talk about uh, cassette tapes. Um, I can't stop looking at Diddy Kong's belly button on that cover. Is it's, that what that is? Yeah, Why is it man. off to one side? He's, he's, kinda, he's got a like little his, bit of a gut going but on. But the belly button you know, should be like over here. Um, I, don't know, I don't know. I don't I mean, know what I, that I, is. I don't it's, care. It's got to be his belly button. I'll tell you one thing, though. That yeah. belly button is deep enough that yeah. he had, if he had that shirt pulled down, yeah. at yeah. the end of the day, he if, when he takes off his shirt, yeah. he'd have lint in that belly button. So that's not just me then? I don't understand why that even happens. Like, yeah, it's just every day I have to pull it. out a nugget of <laughs> any, anyway. Nobody, I think, I think it has, has to do like it's it's true for anybody that has more than uh five percent body fat and oh, has well, an I indefinite uh, uh, fall belly button category. <laughs> um, Rich Rose, Rich Retro says, Do either of you guys know if they send this magazine out at the same time or based on? Uh, it seems like they get sent out at the same time every month, right? Yeah. Like, right around the first, you know, well, the first this year was on a weekend, but I think it wasn't it like Monday. No, today's Monday. Uh, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It was a couple days ago, right? We got our shipping notification. Yeah. Uh, I got mine, I think, a day after yours. Yeah. I mean, we should but I live closer know that we, we've actually gotten our shipping notifications for our next issue already. Yes. And I, yes. Which is kind of what made me freak out and be like, dude, we have to do this because. Yeah, I don't need a well, backlog. I think what we're gonna do, of, go ahead. When it's my turn, yeah, I'm just I I haven't opened my March one yet. I think when it's my turn, I'm gonna open April and March together, and we'll just decide which one we're gonna read. But what if they're both awesome? You can have, you can have like a Sophie's be, Choice kind of situation that you gotta make. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I guess not yeah, really. We'll, but. we'll see what happens in that situation. I don't know. Uh, maybe we'll split it up between nights then, or something. Yeah. Uh, and then Ryan says that magazine looks thick. It's pretty thick. It's not like, um, you know, like a, uh, December 93 EGM kind of thick, but it, yeah, it's about 225 pages. So, you know, it's a little bit of a chunk. Yeah. yeah. I'll be, I'll be curious to see what they focus on because my understanding was back in the day, the EGM two had a lot more like tips and tricks in it. Yeah. Versus. Yes. Cause isn't that tips and tricks is what. Wasn't EG, didn't EGM just turn into Tips and Tricks, or am I thinking of something else? Uh, I I think the Tips and Tricks was a different Was uh, it? Yeah, publisher. maybe right. Um, yeah, Rich, Rich Retro says it's triple the size of today's Game Informers. I didn't realize they still made Game Informer yeah, until I Stephen, making it a Stephen Frost the other day like tweeted that he, he went into a GameStop to get a copy of Game Informer, and I was like, I didn't even know they still made Game Informer. <laughs> Yeah, it's surprising. Yeah. I thought they were on the verge of closing their offices can, about a year ago. Yeah. So you could read the magazine too if we open it. All right. Oh, what's this what's this first oh for This DKC. is Donkey Kong too here. No belly buttons on this page though. <laughs> and um, we are in the thick of the, the play it loud era at this point. Oh yeah, play it. What what is that exactly? Play it loud because like there was know. the it's, Play It Loud it Game Nintendo's Boy attempt to at being like Sega, but was it just Nintendo? Because like I have a I have some blank cassette tapes that say Play It Loud on them. 
Well, isn't that like a uh, Maxell? Uh, they no, they're, no, they're they're TDKs. Oh, I no, I just think that you know, play it loud for Nintendo is just in your face and being gross as much as they could. You know, it's it's very it's very nineties. Yeah. So yes. sorry, uh, Macaeth in the. Yeah, Makayeth mm-hmm. in the chat. Sorry, I confused uh, tips and tricks with expert gamer. Oh, uh, okay. So, yeah. Um, although Ryan says EGM2 turned into tips and tricks. So I don't know. You guys, somebody else will have to figure it out. But uh, all right, yeah. Anyway, so anything you want to say about... Um, this is pretty graphic, actually. There's a lot of roadkill on the grill yeah. of this. Uh, like for a Nintendo ad, like you wouldn't really expect that. Well, I mean, their Play It Loud era, there's there's some definitely some gross things that they put in their ads. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, I don't remember what it was recently, but I saw one that kind of turned my stomach. It was that bad. Gross. Yeah. Wow. To turn your stomach is saying something, too. Because <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, hey, I, you probably guys, you guys won't be able to see it in the corner unless maybe if I can. I don't have the cool thing that you had last time there, but you guys remember AOL keywords? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Were you an AOL user? Uh, only for a short time. I think I, you know, I got like one of their discs at one point and I went ahead and signed up mm-hmm. and used it for a couple months. But, uh, um, was it a disc with a certain amount of hours on it? I think it was, but I think I kept using it for a little while. Like I paid for a couple months, but I ended up switching over to like AT&T WorldNet. Uh, okay. Cause I, made... I, I always wondered like all the people that use the AOL, they had a certain amount of hours. Yeah. How many people use the internet enough or so little that they were able to say, okay, I've used it for 10 hours. My yeah. free trial is over. I'm done. Because yeah, I don't know. How you I do think that. that they, they counted on people like going like way over those hours mm-hmm. and then just charging a ton of money. Yeah. Like, can you imagine using 10 hours of the internet a month? I use 10 hours Even a day. Even back then. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty much on the internet the entire day. If even if you're not on it, the yeah. computer is probably on. Oh, for sure. Uh, and another Super Nintendo ad on the next page: uh, "Secret of Evermore." What? Interesting. For some reason, I thought that that came out the same year as uh, DKC One, but maybe I'm I must have been mistaken. I don't know. Because I, I I for some reason I remember getting those. The same Christmas, but maybe they were a year apart. Because DKC was, uh, like, they were, the fir- like, there was yearly entries for 1, 2, and mm-hmm. 3, I'm pretty sure. Hmm. Uh, Secret of Evermore is pretty good. I've only played through it one time, but, it, you know, it's 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 interesting because it's a uh, U.S.-developed uh, Squaresoft game. Yeah. Uh, next, Masthead over here. Um, anybody in here? It's still, it says Ed Semrad was the editor in chief. I would have thought that it would have its own. Was it all just the same exact people just pumping out two magazines a month? Then yeah, I think so. They're sushi I X. Mean, they they were doing this and you know like the Mega Play and the Super NES Buyer's Guide. I mean, I have no idea like hmm. the amount like how they were able to do what they did. Just trying to see if I recognize any of their names in here, but. Nothing's jumping out. <laughs> Panasonic has been very slow. A major problem. Oh, they're talking about the M2. Oh, okay. But you, you see that picture of, of Ed sitting there. I mean, he strikes me as the kind of guy that he went to he went to work every day. Even for yeah. a video game magazine, he went to work in a suit. Yeah. Every day. Yeah. A suit with suspenders. Well, I mean, he—I mean, he wrote for a newspaper before this, so maybe he considered himself more of a traditional like newsman, you know, like he was like the the less Nessman of video games. <laughs> I don't know if anybody in the chat you know, gets that reference, but I, I I don't. WKRP in Cincinnati. Oh well, I mean, I've I've seen I've seen the show when I was younger, but I've not seen it in a long, long time, which is surprising. Yeah. <laughs> Considering I live here now. Yeah. But maybe I should go back. Uh, you know, Ed Samrad, a lot of people would uh, that worked for him described him as being very intimidating. Really? Uh, but I think that a lot, a lot of that comes down to the fact that he was like the, like in his 40s when he like at this time. Yeah. And there was like 16, 17, 18 year old kids yeah. working with him. Yeah. And I can't imagine being the age 
that I am now and having to wrangle that all the time and you have to meet these deadlines, I would, I'd yeah. lose my mind probably. And See, which he probably did. Mujanga in the chat gets it. Can turkeys fly? As God is my witness, I thought turkeys could fly. <laughs> Great episode. Um, yeah, no, I, I definitely could get that, you know, because like when I started, you know, working like on campus, you know, as a as a student, you know, I was working for people who are my age now and they seem they seemed so old and so much more experienced yeah. than now I'm that age and I realize that, you know, I don't know anything, so um, <laughs> certainly nothing to be intimidated by. Um, and everybody feels that way about you, that you just have so much more experience than them. Probably so. Uh, Here is yet another Super Nintendo uh, ad, this time for Breath of Fire 3. And, or uh, that's uh, 2. Oh, I'm sorry. Two Breath is, of Fire uh, 2. Yeah, no. Breath of Fire 3 was a PlayStation game. Um, it's kind of interesting to see that just because, like, to me, I, I, I kind of feel and maybe it's just my own personal perception, but... You know, I feel like by now the 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 Genesis was kind of like it's not like there weren't still like a few cool Genesis games coming out, but I feel like we're in kind of the period of time now where like you you know the Genesis and the Super Nintendo were kind of fighting neck and neck for a while, but uh, you yes. know if you were somebody who didn't have the means or whatever to like upgrade to a next gen system, then by ninety five you were way better off with the Super Nintendo. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Although Breath of Fire 2 uh, has one of the worst uh, English translations I've ever I've ever experienced. Yeah. Uh, that like Breath of Fire 2 and Wild Arms 2 are the are the two uh, games that I could not play all the way through because uh, the the translation was so bad. That's pretty bad, then. Yeah, and yeah. I, I'm pretty forgiving with that kind of stuff, but I, they're just completely nonsensical. Wow. Uh, what is this the does that say the Raven Project? It looks like it's probably even a 3DO is that? game. It oh, looks this like is a, an advertisement. Ad See, they tell you in the in, in like two point font that this is an advertisement. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> I, I always think about them. EGM doing that kind of stuff more in like 1990 when they would have like those <laughs> those like multi page sections in the middle of the magazine that yeah. like didn't they didn't come out and say they were advertising, but clearly they were. Um, yeah, I agree with you. This looks like a 3D O game. No, it says, um, well, it says the Raven Project is a hot action title that will be available on PC CD-ROM for the holidays. Hot action. A hot action title. It is, and I don't know who this Jim Fisher guy is, but in case you were curious, his favorite food is teriyaki beef, it says here. That's information that will help me in the future, for sure. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Uh, oh, here we go. We got our first PlayStation ad here uh, for NHL <clears throat> Face Off and NFL uh-huh. Game Day. Um, I mean, I think it's no secret anymore that, uh, you know, right now I'm working on the Sony PlayStation in 1995 video for mm-hmm. uh, obviously for the other channel. And so, you know, pretty much any PlayStation game we're going to see in here is something that I'm covering on the show. And I've, you know, I've already mm-hmm. done most of the writing. And, uh, you know, I know most people don't care about sports games or, or whatever, but uh, these two games are actually pretty significant, um, not only because they launched a franchise, each of them, that uh, became, I would say, EA Sports' primary competitor during uh, during this era, but yeah. uh, there, there was both a Madden game and an NHL game uh, that was at one point supposed to come out on the PlayStation uh, in 95. And uh, and they both got canceled. So thank goodness, uh, uh, Sony developed both of these games, and they're yeah. both, in my opinion, pretty good games. Like if you were a sports gamer and you had a PlayStation in '95 and you bought either of these games, um, unless there's something wrong with you, you would you would have been pretty happy. So were these developed by nine nine eight nine, or who would go on to be nine eight nine nine eight nine? Uh, yeah, I mean they may have been called that later, but I think uh, at this point yeah. it was just you know Sony Computer Entertainment there, America. I feel like nine eight nine nine eight nine. I think, uh, like really ruined a lot of stuff that they took over later yeah. on. Like they got got their hands on the Twisted Metal games and ruined those from like after Part Two. Yeah, just a lot of those. Uh, but early, they made. They made Siphon yes, Filter, which is like the the coolest. 
Well, I mean, I mean it has a... Name me three other no, games where you can electrocute somebody with a... <laughs> they catch on fire. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's like, it's it's one of the coolest parts about it. It's maybe yeah. the coolest part about that game. It's the only uh, reason I played it. Yeah. That and, like, the way he uh, shakes, like, he, like, uh, sways his hips when he runs. Yeah, that's true. He looks like he's <laughs> trying to find a bathroom. Uh, Mujanga in the chat says, uh, I bet Jim Fisher has lint in his belly button. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Anybody whose favorite food is teriyaki beef probably has a little bit of <laughs> a little bit of lint down there. Um, anyway, uh, here's a table of contents. I don't like looking on table of contents too much, just because right. it's like spoilers. But I mean, your 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 eye has to kind of immediately notice the Sega Mega Drive logo down here next to the international section. Mm. So I'm very curious to see what's going to be in there. Yeah. Uh, Shockwave Two Beyond the Gate. That's uh, a that's 3DO a video game. game. Yeah, although, didn't, although there, I, that there came out on, on PlayStation. The, on the PS One. Yeah. Re- yeah. Did well, you there were a, there were. Uh, I think so. I haven't I haven't you know I haven't finished the the video yet, but I I'd have to double check, but I'm pretty sure it's in there. Um, Does that? I wonder if that combines one and two and in, into a single game. Because yeah, you don't hear don't anything know. about that that series. Yeah, like, I didn't even know that there was a, a PS One version until recently. Maybe it's not good. Yeah, I, I don't. I bet it's not, but I think that yeah. it's considered pretty good on on 3DO because well, people's are, the I mean, competition is not. Yeah, I was gonna <laughs> say it doesn't take as much to be like a standout title on the 3DO. So yeah, um, yeah. Here's another PlayStation ad. This is a good one. Um, I think this was kind of a, a a layout that Namco did with a couple yes. of um, their early games. Uh, Namco was kind of a major player, I would say, in the early days. Of, they they uh, were probably of the, the PlayStation major player. Um, I mean, because you got, I like I big, said here, you got big, Ridge Racer, Air Combat, and Tekken, which I would say were three of the biggest releases of 1995. For sure, for yeah. sure. I mean, I think it's it could be argued that the reason the PS1 even like achieved the success that it did probably had a lot to do with Namco. Yeah, and they made the the Nijicon controller so. Yes, yeah. which I tried to get recently on eBay, and doing? Well, I was Do sniped it. in the last moments of my. Of how much? Do you auction. remember how much it sold for? I don't remember what it was. I'm just. I mean, I'm only asking because I'm just curious what they sell for these days. But it's not a big. Yeah. Deal. I got a five dollar donation from Jonathan Hinson. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you last night, Corey. What happened last uh, night? I was, yeah, what was going uh, on well, last I, night? It was like uh, that that Easter PC ninety eight Audi guy was. I saw something about Easter egg hunts for ROMs or something, but I didn't really understand what. Was well, going he, on. he, he uh, Audi gave try like a whole like twenty seven ROMs, and uh, they they were not labeled; they were just like labeled by number. Oh, okay. And he just kind of went through and and chose them. Yeah. And it would be like it's like a mix of like like ROM hacks, uh, yeah. um, like Famicom games that he probably had never played. It was just like a yeah. really interesting. That sounds uh, very. Cool. List. Yeah, and he, yeah. he had no idea what he was going to play. Uh, but he said, uh, Chris, your episode was a highlight of my Sunday. Can't wait to buy the mixtape set. Oh, yeah. I forgot, I, yeah, the uh, the episode that I uploaded yesterday um, seems like mm-hmm. people like it pretty well. Uh, I did put up some more mixtapes for sale today, but they already sold out. So um, <laughs> there will be more coming soon. Uh, That's here, nice. What? It's nice that they sell through so quick. It's got to feel good. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty crazy. Uh, here we are in the letters uh, section, which um, hmm. so is Nintendo's goal to make big bucks or big entertainment. This is like too long of a letter. I don't really want to read that one. Um, mm-hmm. What's this guy's problem? Oh, I might like this letter. Okay. Uh, Dear EGM2, what the heck is this Super Mario World 2 Yoshi's Island? I mean, come on. Super Mario died after Super Mario World. At least Sonic knows how to die, but this Mario garbage, come on. What this this uh, was fit to print? Who definitely has never played it. This uh, this person apparently doesn't care for Yoshi's Island uh that much. Well, he hadn't played it. I bet just saw screenshots of it and said, "What is this kitty stuff?" I bet you they I bet you they like the game now. I don't know. Well, if Tim Santos from LA, if you're out there, yeah, it's funny. The the, the editor writes back. I'm guessing you're not a Mario fan. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
And this person says, is this a good deal? I was wondering if it is a good deal to trade in any 10 of your Genesis, Super Nintendo, 3DO, Saturn, or Jaguar games for only a $100 discount on the PlayStation. I really wouldn't think so because you're going to be trading in 10 games that you at least spent $50 to $60 on and all you're getting is $100 off the PlayStation. I don't yep. think it's worth it. Well, it depends on what it is, you know? I mean, I don't I don't know if you remember when, like, GameStop would do this kind of thing where, uh, like, I remember that's how I got the, the Slim PS2. Is like they had some deal where it was like, bring us your fat PS2 and, like, any five PlayStation 2 games, and you can buy the Slim one for, like, you know, 50 bucks or something. And so, like, you I know, know I brought them my fat PS2 and like five, like really, really crappy games are only worth a couple bucks a piece, you know? Yeah. But uh, I mean, for the most part, I think with like super NES and stuff like that, it, it wasn't worth it. But a lot of people did that because that was the only way that they could afford to upgrade. But I'm saying like, this is in like 95, right? So if you had like Madden 92, you know, and stuff like that, then excuse me madden 92 is the best madden game oh, i'm sorry i forgot about that you and the ambulance <laughs> thing that was a bad example <laughs> i i wouldn't trade in madden 92 uh, no nor, nor would i um anyway oh somebody else dumping on yoshi's island Prior to writing this letter, I witnessed what, what must be one of the most horrible TV advertisements out there. Can you guess what mm -hmm. it is? Yep, that's right. Yoshi's Island. First of all, I, it's... I yeah. First I, of all, I, I it's... I know exactly what he's talking about. It's totally I, repulsive. I oh, is this the one that made your stomach turn? Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of like that scene from uh, uh, Mayan Python's The History of, of the World. Oh, oh, where that uh, guy is like eating um, everything. He eats so much. He's just like pigging Mr. Creosote. Like, What's that? Mr. Creosote. Well, as I believe his name. Yeah. Yeah. The guy and that he, just like eats and pukes. Yeah. And then, you know, like he like blows up. He's like, yeah. just one more. It's way for thin. It's yeah. exactly like that. Oh, yeah. Look here. This is exactly what you were saying. Um, who wants to see some fat guy stuffing his face? There must be something seriously wrong with the game. Does it really have anything to do with the game anyway? All it does is get people's attention and did it for me in a very negative way. This play it loud thing has gone too far. And I think someone, or I think something okay. should be done before Nintendo has to start rating their ads. Yeah. Oh, I, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's funny because that was exactly what I was saying. But it's because Yoshi eats things. I know, but. Okay. And then he poops out it's just, eggs. It's just gross. Okay. It's just gross. That's like my chickens. They eat things and they poop out eggs. I forgot you have chickens. Yeah. Uh, oh, psycho. It's funny. This is the psycho letter of the month. I already feel like I've read about three psycho letters of the month. Um, <laughs> Dear EGM, I'm holding one of your issues hostage. As you can see, I have torn off one of the pages as proof. I will continue to tear off pages one piece at a time until you print my letter. Wow. That's a little bit on the psycho side. It is. I feel like it, people would just write stuff like that just to try to become the psycho letter of the month, though. Oh. You know? And that kind of, like, makes it stupid. For sure. You know, it, that would be like if I decided to start tweeting out, like, once a month I'm going to do, like, psycho comment of the month that someone left on one of my <laughs> videos. Like, then people are just going to start making psycho comments because they want to try to become the psycho comment of the month, you know? Yes. Yeah. And then, it, then it's no longer psycho because it's just like a fake psycho. Exactly. Um, all right. Uh, and then over here we got an ad for Mech Warrior 3050, which I've never played, so I don't have anything Me to say. All right. Good enough. Oh, God. More letters. Um, that's okay. I'm not that, gonna... that, that, you know, that was a secret to EGM. It's just like. Let somebody else do your writing for you, you know? <laughs> or double and triple up on the segments that people don't really read that much in the other in the in the normal yeah issues uh star trek deep space nine harbinger, harbinger. for pc and macintosh you ever i mean are, well first of all like are you into star trek at all like did you ever get into like uh, the I mean, tv no, show I, or? I, I like it yeah. but i have not 
uh, watched all of the entire like next generation series or or any yeah. series, you know. Yeah. But I have seen all the movies. Yeah. And I in, in, enjoy them quite a bit. And uh, I even like the like the reboot trilogy a lot. Although I didn't like yeah. really like the second one all that much. No. But I think the the first reboot and the third reboot. Yeah. Uh, Pretty good. Movies are very very good. Yeah. Um, well, I was only asking cause like, I mean, I was, you know, back around, well, I guess by this time, I think the next generation had ended, but, um, mm-hmm. although I still watched, the, uh, there was a TV station where I grew up that showed, uh, every single night at 6 PM, they showed an episode of Star Trek, the next generation. So like in the early nineties, like when the show was still on, like Monday through Saturday would be a rerun and then Sunday would be like the, the current episode or whatever. But even after yeah. it ended, they kept uh they kept showing it because apparently according to them it got higher ratings than like any of the six o'clock newses did but um I only say that just to say that uh for as much as I love that show like I never really played any of the Star Trek uh video games the only one that I kind of checked out was the Star Trek 25th anniversary game uh on PC mm-hmm. but even that one I didn't really get that into I, I don't know I like watching it but I didn't I didn't really get into any of the games, which is funny because for people who watched the the episode that I uploaded yesterday, I talked about how the reason yeah. that I loved Starflight and Buck Rogers was just because of the, you know, they reminded me of Star Trek. And yet an actual Star Trek game comes out and I'm like, nah. Yeah, I, you know, I was watching I was watching some of your episode earlier today and I was thinking about that as you were talking about it, because, you know, as somebody who didn't really watch very much Star Trek, but only watched the movies, uh I, I love Starflight, and it's just it is way yeah. more interesting to me than than any of the games. I mean, I was the same way. I put a ton of time into Starflight the game, but never played any of the games. Yeah, I would like to try that uh, that VR that Bridge Commander VR game. I didn't know there was a VR cool. one. Yeah, where you're just like you know, it's like Bridge Commander or something like that. That might be cool. Where, and you can you play online with other people, and everybody has their post. Yeah. And it's all VR, and you would, like, talk to each other. I don't want to play with other people. That sounds horrible. But, I mean, if it was, if it was people that you knew. Oh, would, yeah, that would be different. Um, wasn't there – there was a uh, – what was it called? There there was a, a 32X Star Trek game. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't I remember forgot. what it was. Though. But it's supposed to be, I think, kind of – well, I shouldn't say that. But, like, my, my favorite podcast to listen to, Retro Game Squad, I believe they had some uh, positive things to say about it, so – Mm-hmm. I, I, uh, Rich Richrow in the tra- chat is asking if you ever read Wizard Magazine. Mm, no. Was that? That was a comic book. That's what I was going to say. I thought so. Uh, no, I never. I wasn't I wasn't enough into comic books that I wanted right. to read a magazine about comic books. I yeah. read like Beckett, you know. Another one of, uh, of Sendai's magazines that I would I would I think it would be fun to go back and revisit today. Yeah. Is uh is there is there movies and TV magazine Cinescape? Oh, that would be fun to get a co- uh, like an issue of and do a read through of. Yeah. We could do that together. That would be fun. That would be that'd be really fun. All right. Remind me All later right. and I'll I'll get I'll quit buying stereo uh magazines <laughs> and, and uh... I mean it'd be cool to I I remember uh, one specific specific issue uh, said that what they thought was going to like the Star Wars prequels were going to be, and this was before they were like even announced they were going to happen. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. All right, next page here. Oh God, more letters. Um, oh, letter <laughs> art though. I was like checking those out. Those were fun. Yeah, but I mean, I I I got a little peek of what's uh, what the next ad is. All right, so calm I'm, down. So. Wait your turn. Um, the SSI game. I haven't played. The Dungeon and Dragons. Uh, well, it's Death Keep. Um, yeah, it, it's uh, Death Keep is Advanced Dungeons and Dragons Dungeon Delving the Way You Like It. I don't know. I don't know how I like my Dungeon Delving personally. Yeah, I'm not but, a big Dungeon Crawler fan. Yeah, they're okay. Just when I think of SSI, I think of like the Gold Box games from like the you know yeah. late late eighties and early nineties. You know. Yeah, thick uh, manuals. Oh yeah, there you go. Chrono Trigger. Oh yeah. I I'll, I'll let you talk about. I haven't. I really player. haven't played that much Chrono Trigger, so. Uh, um, it is. It, you know, it has a reputation that it totally lives up to. I think. Yeah. 
uh, I was lucky to play it. You know, I bought mine the the, co- the the day it came out. I had it pre-ordered and everything. Yeah. And it is a sub 20 hour RPG and it is so perfectly paced that there is basically zero fat in the game. And well, I like the I fact that, that it's short. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can do everything that there is to do, like all the, like the, the bonus stuff in like less than 20 hours. I mean, it is, it's, it's great. It's like such a cool story. And, you know, if you like time travel and like yeah. affecting, you know, the past and changing the future, it's, it's really, really cool. And it is, it totally lives up to the hype and yeah. like every single way. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I know, I know I should play it. It's funny. I was going to say I have it, but I, at this point, do you, you have the cartridge? I do, but I was just going to say at this point, it, do, it doesn't matter anymore. You know, it's just, I'm, I'm old and I'm still of the mindset of like, Oh, I can play that game. I have it. And it's like, well, you don't need to have yeah. it anymore. You know, but it's true. It's true. But the, the cartridge does go for quite a bit. Yeah. You know, just, well, mine was about $2 ooh. with the manual. So you, I mean, you're, you, well, you could sell it for a, like a decent oh, amount, but yeah, I'm not gonna, you should, you should like, I'm not going to do you that. Know, but. You, you could, you could play, you should play it. You should play yeah. it. Cause I think that you will not be let down. Yeah. It just, you um, know, it has, I mean, it's, it's, it's it, almost as perfect of an RPG. Yeah. As you, you, you could imagine. I should, I could do a multi-part live stream. That would be fun. Oh, Yes, that would be yeah, cool. Because because totally. I would be playing it through for the first time, so that it's like when I beat mm-hmm. Zelda two. Like that was the first time I ever beat Zelda two. Um, yeah. Oh, there's Tim Jenkins saying, "Do I smell an upcoming twenty plus hour Chrono Trigger live stream?" Maybe it'd be kind of cool. Um, yes, I watch that. Yeah, you got, got five dollars from Mr. Cellini. Is it Cellini right. or Cellini? You have to ask him how he pronounces his name there. But um, well, thanks. That I take that as a, a high compliment. So thank you very much. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh. And then we got one from Zach Atkinson also. Um, yeah, I'm sorry for the CGQ withdrawal. Um, you know, I said in a pin <laughs> comment on that video, like, I think things are starting to go back to normal. I think I can start, you know, yeah, uh, uploading regular videos again. But, um, so thank you both uh, to both of you. Uh, one thing I, I just kind of wanted to say, uh, this doesn't have anything to do with this or anything, but it's just something I was thinking about. Uh, I think yesterday after I finished that video, um, cause I, I mentioned, I put it in the description, you know, I always have my little show notes that I put in the description mm-hmm. and, um, I mentioned, although I also actually tweeted about it, but, uh, you know, the, the thumbnail for that video is I just grabbed like a bunch of games off of my shelf that were featured in that video. And I spread them out on the floor down here in the basement and just took a picture. And then that was like the thumbnail. And yeah, it looks um, awesome. Oh well, thank you. You should make a you uh, make a Windows background of that. Oh, for sure. I in fact I, I don't like putting, you know, I, I put classic gaming quarterly in big you know, big words or whatever, you know, large font on there. Mm-hmm. And I don't really like doing that, but like that's exactly the kind of picture that people are gonna steal from me and, and use and that kind of drives me a little bit yeah. insane. Like you should put them you should undercut them and put it like up on your website or something like that for yeah. people to download and you could just like put like little CGQ, like watermark in the corner. Yeah. Um, but so anyway, but what I was going to say though is, is, uh, you know, I looked up online, I just had a curiosity. I've never messed around with that price charting website. Cause like, I don't really normally care about that kind of stuff, but for whatever reason, I was just curious and I was sitting here and the games are all right there. And so I looked up each one and made a list and it was like, I don't really, I think that price charting's valuations are very high. Like mm-hmm. you can see what it says a, a complete in box copy of a game goes for, and then you can go look on eBay and you can find buy it nows like for significantly less than what they're saying the value is. But yeah, um, but it just got me thinking about how, like, you know, I always talk about like the old days of like going out to thrift stores and stuff, and like, you know, because most of those games came from, you know, just video game hunting back when those games only cost like, you know, two, three dollars a piece. Mm-hmm. And like you know, like now, like according to price charting, that was about eighteen hundred dollars worth of games. Which again, <laughs> like I'm not sure how much I agree uh Probably with, with that valuation. Less but but it just like took me back to like the old days of like, you know, you would go out game hunting and it, like I feel like now everybody gets all hung up on like the value of what you found, you know, like people will post on like, you know, Reddit or whatever, like, Oh, look what I found. And it's like, you know, 
a few like complete and box Super Nintendo games that are like 200 bucks a piece. And it just seems like the excitement comes from the fact that you found something expensive. But yeah, like back when I was like going out looking for this stuff, like none of it was worth anything. Like you would, you always saw games at the thrift store. Like there was just a game shelf at the thrift store. And the only question was like whether or not there was anything on the shelf that you actually cared about, like that you didn't already have and that you wanted to check out. Because like this was before like ever drives or anything like that was a thing. And so if you wanted to play a game you didn't own, your only choice was like to fire up an emulator on your computer, which I was never personally into. And so like mm-hmm. I would go out and find these games and I would get excited because now I can go home and play these games. Like, oh, I've always wanted to check this game out. And like now I can play it. But like now, you know, it's like the games don't have that kind of value anymore because the fact that I have a game has no bearing on whether or not I can play it. Right. You know, which it kind of makes me like, I I really miss those old days. Like I miss like when collecting games was about, you know, picking up some games that you were, yeah. And just picking up games that you you were curious about and like, Oh, this, this looks cool. And like, then you'd come home and you'd pop it in. And and it was like, you know, cause when Chrono Trigger came out, it was, Sixty nine ninety nine, yeah. seventy nine ninety nine. Yeah, and you know, if you get that for two dollars, you say, "Oh, I saw that. I remember seeing that in an ad." In an ad, of course, I'm going to buy that for two bucks. Yeah, well, I, I mean, I only got. I mean, I think I told this story before, but like the way I got Chrono Trigger was some guy was selling a Game Boy on Craigslist, and it was like a Game Boy with like a handful of games in a carrying case for like you know, however much it was, ten bucks or whatever. And I went over to his house to pick it up and I just asked, I'm like, oh, do you have any other video games? You know, like, remember, that's what Bithead used to always say about the yard sale things. Like, you always ask if they have video games. And so I just asked, oh, do you have anything else? And he was like, oh, yeah, I think I might. And he went into his house and he came out with uh, Chrono Trigger and Final Fantasy three, both with the <laughs> manual. And I said, oh, like, yeah. you know, how much do you want? And I, it, it was something like 350 for both of them, you know. But this was like this was like twelve years ago, probably or more, you know. And it was yeah. definitely a good deal. But back then, those were probably like fifteen dollar games, and I got them for like way right. too. And so, and then, and then you went home thinking like, like feeling like you robbed the bank because like oh, I got a fifteen dollar game for two dollars, you know. But like, how much are those games worth now? Yeah. Anyway, see, I I, I never got to exp- experience that aspect of it because. I paid sixty nine ninety nine for my copy of Chrono Trigger. Well, you got a brand new copy though, you know. <laughs> That's true. I and have I a got used the, copy know, with a wrinkly manual. I got I got the in I it's cool because I got to play it before I had any kind of like expectations or anything yeah. like that behind it. It was just Yeah. You know, I was I knew it was gonna be a good game based on the Squaresoft logo on, on the on the box. Yeah. This is a very bad ad. Uh, yeah. Like what? I don't know. It's just going on the, the Toy Story logo, really. Although I've I've not played it, but I guess the Toy Story uh, Genesis game is is very technically impressive. Hey, wouldn't you like to know, in case, unless you already know this, uh, Toy Story is like the only game that I have where it's like, it's not a prototype, but it's like a review cartridge. Really? So, uh, yeah, I found it. Uh, I paid two bucks for it. I got it at a flea market. Um, and, yeah, it was this copy of Toy Story with just a paper label. It was printed, but it just said, like, Toy Story on it. And it said something about, you know, being a review copy. But I picked it up, and it was very, very heavy. And that's because it's all uh, EEPROMs in there. Uh, did you have, you have you dumped it? I have not dumped it. I don't even know how to you how do you dump. dump that. I don't even know how to dump things. Like, can you use a Mega you SG and dump a, things? A, well, you should send a send a DM to Frank Safal that he could he could help you. He does. He could help you dump that. He ignores, no, that's like he ignores he my. But he, I emailed him and he ignored me, so I'm not bothering Frank anymore. Oh, but I mean, you know, getting like prototypes like that out. Yeah. I mean. Well, I mean, it's I not. I mean, it's probably like a pre-release copy or something. I don't really know, but, but it's you just never like, know. There could be something about it that is just different. Maybe it's this. You know, like what? Like uh, if you watch like the newest uh, Analog Frontiers episode, that's what yeah. Artemio says. You know, a lot of people think that they just have something. Yeah. That is really common, but you never know. It could be. Yeah, that's true. Can you not really use a Mega rare. SG to dump a ROM? 
Uh, no, it has. There's no uh, copy, copy Genesis uh, hmm. application in there, unfortunately. Hmm. All right. Well, maybe I'll see if uh... surprised that it was never added to it. But you should. You should definitely. All right. I'll. I'll see. Oh, does does I mean, as far as I know, it, it doesn't have a way to dump the uh, the Genesis games. I mean, I see Henry Clark is saying someone sent this man a Mega SG to dump with. Well, I have a Mega. I have a Mega SG right here, actually. On the floor. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that even the the uh, the jailbreak firmware does not allow for dumping of Genesis games. That's too bad. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Uh, oh, now we got a um, article about M2. Thanks to a hundred million dollar deal with 3DO, Panasonic is now in the driver's seat. I, you know, I really don't know anything about the whole M2 thing. Yeah, I don't really know very much either. I just remember it being talked about a little bit, but I have no idea what the whole, uh, uh, what the big deal is supposed to be. Yeah, I, I mean, I just remember if you read magazines from around this time, like it was being pretty heavily uh, hyped. Mm-hmm. Like, that was going to be, like, okay, the 3DO didn't really turn out to be, like, you know, this great thing that maybe it was supposed to be. But, oh, you just wait for, you know, the M2 to for the come 3DO 2. Yeah. 3DO uh, Mark 2. And then this is kind of cool. I don't, is this? The busted system? I think that's an official Nintendo ad, isn't it? Um, yeah, busted uh, system. Get back into the game immediately with Power Swap. Power Swap oh. gives you a permanent replacement. Uh, unit now you'll be back in the game with little weight and no expense i only say that because it says copyright 1995 nintendo but that may just be because they used i mean you can't just use donkey kong in your ad right Mm -hmm. if you're some third party weirdo but Mm -hmm. oh yeah it says here while nintendo may suggest repair pricing service providers are free to set their own pricing but 25 bucks to repair and there's a that's a top loading nes 25 for uh, a Game Boy and 35 for a Super Nintendo. So basically you're trading in your broken one and getting like a refurbished right. or something. But I mean, how often do people's cartridge systems break, you think? Probably not very often. Yeah, I don't mean it never happened to me, but that's just a sample size of one, right? Although my, my Game Boy did break. The screen, uh, I guess, must have broken. Mm. So, I mean, that I could see. You know, especially as a supportable system, I could see that breaking. But yeah, I mean, seems like having a um, uh, Super Nintendo break or something is probably a little bit weird. Yeah, I see the ad for the Horde from Crystal Dy- Dynamics. Doesn't that yeah. game have Kirk Kirk Cameron in it? I, uh, I don't know. Game. I've honestly never um, played the Horde. I think I I think I might have it. I'm pretty sure that it has Kirk Cameron. Yeah. It's like the main character. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's the systems over there? Like you got the uh, oh. it's like online so it things. Update who's making the connection. Networks, internet. These two words have sprung up in ever-increasing numbers and conversations regarding the new platform systems thanks to advances in technology, blah, blah, blah. And then, yeah, you got Sega Saturn, uh, Ultra 64, as the Nintendo 64 was still known uh, at this time. And then mm-hmm. uh, PSX and M2. That was that was supposed to be the big the big three, I guess. Yeah, although it's funny because I mean, internet connectivity was not really uh, an integral part of any of those systems, if at all. Uh, Hot sauce and video games does confirm that it does that it does that the horde has Kirk Cameron in it. Oh well, there you go. Uh, what else we got here? WrestleMania tips on video. I don't care about that. Uh, IBM crashes the PSX party. PC software arm to develop 32-bit games. I don't know anything about that. It says IBM Interactive Studio, the entertainment software arm of Big Blue, has plans to release three arcade-type PlayStation games, all of which will likely be out by the fall of 96. I don't... I mean, do you even know what they're talking about? I don't. Oh, well, they're saying here, uh, okay, so uh, he decided it, that some guy declined to discuss specific game titles because agreements have yet to be hammered out. However, he did say one game, Quest for Fame, is a strong contender for being in that market. I've never heard of that. So, um, look, look at that knock, that knack, 
Naki, Naki. I don't know. What I, I, I personally almost, would say Naki, but um, yeah, it almost looks like a Saturn controller. It almost looks like crap. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't. I just never understand. I always say this. I just, I don't understand why third party controllers are even a thing. Just because it even says in here this controller was nineteen ninety nine, and like what a first party PlayStation controller was like what. Twenty four ninety nine, like mm. really to save five dollars, you're gonna use like a crappy controller. I don't know. Yeah. I never got it. like to me. Like I mean, I bought maybe a couple of third party controllers in my life, but it was more like you know my parents dropped me off at the mall and gave me like five dollars, and I found something in like the clearance bin at KB Toys, <laughs> you know, and then yeah, came home and tried it out and it sucked, you know. Yeah. I can't stop laughing, laughing at at, uh, at at Jesus Christ in the chat. Have? I don't. I, mean, I I feel like they're probably uh, are in these streams a lot, but I just I can't not think of the uh, the Winnebago man. Oh, I don't. Like, I don't know what you're talking the, about. Uh, well, there's this guy who sold like these Winnebagos, and uh, he would always record these commercials. Uh-huh. And he, he kind of rose to fame like through like this video of like outtakes of him like losing his patience recording his com- commercials. Yeah. And there's this one, and somebody compiled all of these outtakes into in this big into this big long video. Yeah. And there's so many like there's this <laughs> there's so many uh, shots of just like the outside of this Winnebago with it, like an audio feed going into it, and yeah. then he's just like Jesus Christ. <laughs> wow. Just like like you can't get it right. Yeah, I guess we didn't I, have I win a, win a bagel man here. Somebody made California. a documentary on him after. Really? Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with his uh, with his work, but that's like <laughs> I heard that. Do you guys have um, Shane Co. back there, the jewelry no. store chain? No. So here we have this chain of jewelry stores called Shane Co. and uh, they have these radio ads, and the guy that. The guy that owns the company, his name is his last name is Shane. His name's Tom Shane, you know. And mm-hmm. so he just has these like radio commercials where he's just like, you know, hi, I'm Tom Shane from you know, or he, you know, he sounds like real, just like you know, laid back or whatever. Oh, Derek says they have Shane yeah. Company, but apparently there's like you know an outtakes kind of thing running around where like he's cursing up a storm like during <laughs> the outtake, but he just seems so like wholesome. You know, yeah. in these commercials, and then I mean, of course, um, uh, Casey Kasem. Like, there's, there's, there's some audio running around of Casey Kasem cussing. <laughs> you know, outtakes during the American Top Forty. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know. Oh, Reluctant Hero and Derek are both mentioning uh, the Diamond Center. Your friend in the Diamond yeah. business. I thought that was a local thing around here. I forgot that guy's name. But uh, that guy was real scummy. Anyway, um, and then over here, here's an ad for if you want to subscribe. So you could get a dual subscription to EGM and EGM2. So you get 24 issues delivered every two weeks. So you'd get, you know, you didn't get EGM and EGM2 at the same time. They were like offset. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, they're staggered. Yeah, and that's for, for 37 bucks. That sounds like a pretty good deal. For 24 issues, that's pretty good because how much what's the cover price on here? Five dollars. So what's five I mean, times thirty six? I can't I can't even count that high, but it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean how uh like how are they not recycling content between those? I I mean I don't who says that they aren't? I don't know. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, if you're getting if you're signing up for that deal, oh, I want that. You know, they know that you can't yeah. recycle that much content, or else people are going to be able to tell. Uh, I see that arcade stick Mo- though. Mujanga says I would not be cool with a Mister Rogers outtakes video. I very much yeah. agree with that. Like that would be if, if it ever turned out that like Mister Rogers was like you know when the cameras were turned off, like you know get these effing puppets out of my face, you know like. <laughs> that would be hor- that's like that would be like finding out that like you know America's dad in the 80s turned out to be like a rapist or something. Yeah. Oh wait, that actually happened. All right, never mind. Um uh that's, anyhow. That's, that's true. 
Oh, we got uh, two dollars from Super J Man nine nine one. Uh, Chris and Corey, happy Monday. I did not have a happy Monday today. I will not bore the chat with the details, but uh, yeah. Um, oh, so anyway, I just want to point out over here. This seems like pretty, I would like to get my hands on this if it actually exists. It says Interplay's 3DO sampler for $5. And then it wants you to know the price of a fast food lunch. Uh, gamers can feast their eyes on seven new Interplay titles on a CD sampler disc. Alone in the Dark 2, Casper, Siberia, Kingdom, The Far Reaches, Out of This World, Water World, and Wolfenstein CD. Five of the games will be one-level demos. The other two will be non-interactive. Included with the CD is a $5 rebate coupon good for any Interplay 3DO title. So that would be, I think I only have like one or two 3DO demo discs. I just like, I like demo discs. Those are fun to kind of collect and also check out. So yeah, if that actually came out, I'm sure you can just find one on eBay or something. If you want to see a pretty cool uh, video series on demo discs, you should check out a, a Jimmy Hoppe in import gaming for the win. Yeah, his channel, and yeah. he does a really cool thing where he compares uh, some like Japanese game demos versus the the final releases. That would be cool. Yeah, I think I've seen that guy show, Jimmy Hoppa. Yeah. Um, hey, Smoke Monsters here. <laughs> he says you can st you can stop there. He sold me at Waterworld. I saw Waterworld Waterworld in the theater. I haven't seen I Waterworld. Is it any good? I mean, I know it, I've, people. I mean, make I fun saw it in the it, theater, but... and that's it. Um, I don't remember anything about it. Here's a blockbuster he ad. His... And, oh. uh, and it, it even uh, features the Virtual Boy. Uh, if you're going round and round trying to choose a game system, jump off here. Before you buy a new game system, take it for a spin at Blockbuster Video, where you can rent all the hottest games and all the latest systems. And then they have a coupon here. Save $5. Rent a game system and two games for three evenings for $9.99. That's a pretty damn good deal. In my opinion, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I've. Did you ever get to do that? I'd never in my life have rented a game system, but I would. Uh, I would like to have. I've, a friend rented an N sixty four early on, but that is it. I never rented one myself. I mean, I didn't even have a Blockbuster for the longest time. Oh, same here. We we, we had a uh, we had Video Factory for a while, and. Uh, I, I talk about this place a lot, but Video Factory had a like, uh, a like the back half of the store was this place called Zappers, which was a game store. Okay, and was it? Pay hold on though. Was this a chain or was it like a single like mom and pop? No, 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 no. So it's it's kind of a like a like a Western New York okay kind of place. Yeah. I mean, as far as I know, I think the Zappers was like uh, only between say like buffalo and like uh like like syracuse probably like yeah. like a like you know a western half of yeah. of new york state but zappers was amazing because they you could pay 50 cents and you'd get to play any game in the store yeah for an hour like they had a console you, set up and stuff and they would just hand they you had a like a whole like line of of uh consoles yeah and you could just pick any game, and they sit, you'd sit down, and they get it, whatever system that you wanted to use out, and plug it in, and you could play. I mean, I don't know about you, but when I went to an arcade and put a quarter into a machine, like I got about two to three minutes of entertainment out of that before I got game over. So, fifty cents for an entire hour of playing a console game is a very, very good deal. Super good deal. Yeah, yeah I mean, I used to go and play stuff like Need for Speed, and uh, you know, just stuff that I. I couldn't afford but i remember that place was there at the very beginning of the uh the playstation era yeah and i didn't have one i remember playing like mk3 on the on the playstation yeah there and um yeah so it would have been right at, right at the same time i bought my copy of final fantasy 2 from there yeah uh this is interesting this is arcade's newest player acclaim ready to test coin op waters um, this oh, is, with, with the Batman Forever game, looks like. Yeah, Batman Forever will be Acclaim's first coin op, it says. I think maybe it was the only one, because <clears> it's, <throat> it's, a, it's a pretty good it's a pretty good game, but it feels yeah. like your characters are ice skating around. Mm -hmm. uh, but, mm -hmm. I mean, I 
can't tell anything else about the game. And then down here it says uh, arcade classics find their way back home. Namco of America is known for some of the best games to come out in the past few years. Ridge Racer, Rave Racer, Tekken 1, Tekken 2. Um, I don't know. Just as Namco plans to come out with the Namco Classic Collection, which, well, that's true. Um, mm. And then uh, over here we have top 10 arcade games according to Replay uh, Magazine. And I think is it, I, I don't, I don't want to miscredit people, but I, I want to say it was Gaming Alexandria that was uploading all those scans of Replay Magazines to uh, oh, really? Internet Archive. But um, yeah, anyway. So uh, top 10 arcade games for November of 1995. Uh, starting at number 10, you have King of Fighters 95, which doesn't surprise me. Uh, Gal's Panic 2, I've never even heard of that. Uh, WWF WrestleMania, which of course was ported to the PlayStation. Bust a Move, Street Fighter Alpha, X-Men Children of the Atom, which uh, that one came out uh, at least on the Sega Saturn, because I have that. Mm-hmm. Raiden DX, Viper, Mortal Kombat 3, and number one was Tekken 2. So, and uh, so Tekken Two is already out at this point. It was the top arcade game in the in the country, yeah. or maybe in the world. I don't know if this is. Um, I assume this is in North America because then they have uh, top hits of Japan down here. And one thing I want to point about that is that uh, number one uh, top hit of Japan is Alpine Racer, which <laughs> uh, I used to play that game. Uh, there was a bar I used to go to, probably around this time. NFTs? Actually, what's that? You like stand on skis or yeah. something like you that? You stood on skis and you had like these like handle things that you hung on to on the side. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was really fun. Like, I wouldn't mind if I had the room that that's the kind of art, like dedicated arcade cabinet I wouldn't mind having. Yeah, that would be pretty sweet. I mean, I in, in college, I remember uh, another game, it was not it was either a skateboard or a snowboarding game that was like that. Yeah. I don't remember what it was called. Our, our the student lounge had that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, yeah, and then Jesus Christ says, "Did you know that Blockbuster rented Virtual Boy?" Uh, yeah, and then I don't know why he's asking. He says, "Chris, do you consider yourself a celebrity?" <laughs> uh, absolutely not. Uh, Corey's the celebrity, not me. Um, and then uh, over here uh, is an ad for uh, Mortal Kombat Three. But uh, from the looks of it, this appears it's because it has a logo for Nintendo and Sega. So this is like, uh, I think, an ad just for the 16-bit versions of uh, Mortal right. Kombat 3. And what, do you, what are your thoughts on Mortal Kombat 3? I mean, everybody knows I'm not the hugest Mortal Kombat fan. But, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I thought, like, I already did that segment for the, for the episode. I, I Mortal Kombat 3 is just like, if you like Mortal Kombat, you know, it's an incremental upgrade, I think. Yeah. Um, I think at, at one point there was talk of um, Mortal Kombat 3 being a 3D game, and that, of course, ended up not happening. But, mm-hmm. um, I mean, it's, I don't know. I, I think if you like Mortal Kombat, it, it seems like it's a good game to me. But I don't, I don't, I don't even really consider myself somebody that should be, like, critiquing a Mortal Kombat game just because... <laughs> You know, yeah, I, I mean, I see it like uh, Jesus Christ is saying it's it sucked when it released. It felt like a step backwards from MK2, and I I I agree with that. I I think that it gets it went too slapstick, yeah. After the second one, hmm. and I think that was a big disappointment for me with with MK3, where you know the fatalities. <clears throat> Went from like ripping people in half to yeah. uh, Jack's like turning into like a giant and stomping on somebody. Like it's just not. Yeah. That looks pretty awesome though. But I, I get what you're saying. <laughs> uh, here we have an ad for. Um, you say ASCII or AS, ASCII, right? Do you pronounce the That's C? Because you don't want to say yeah. assy. That would be stupid. Assy. Yeah. Or I, I always thought it was ashy. For, when I was younger, I would say ashy. Well, this controller looks kind of assy. <laughs> but the arcade stick, the arcade stick looks cool, but I bet it's not. Like I bet that joystick probably feels like crap. Although I could be totally wrong. I bet it does. I bet. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. I bet y'all both of those really, really. Suck. Uh, hey, here's an ad. Did you think that you were going to see an ad for the Virtual Boy today when you woke up this morning? Probably not. No, I did not. Um, that's pretty neat. 
What do we got here? Galactic Pinball, Red Alarm, Telero Boxer, uh, Wario Land, and Mario Tennis. Do you, do you have a Virtual Boy, or have you ever I had it? I don't. Have you ever had a I Virtual Boy? I never have either. Oh, man. Nope. I already told my story about I, I found a Virtual Boy um, at a thrift store for a dollar. <laughs> that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was like, uh, I mean, I told the story already, but whatever, I'll tell it again. So I go into this, uh, there's this thrift store uh, here in Davis where um, like the uh, the like the like charity or whatever that they, you know, support with, you know, the revenue from the store is like a mental health charity. And there's like mm-hmm. a, it has a consignment store and then right next to it is a thrift store. And so like the stuff in the thrift store is either the things that didn't sell in the consignment store or things that they're like, we're not putting this for sale in the consignment store because we don't want to. And uh, for whatever reason, the thrift store is always staffed by somebody who, I guess it's like whatever organization they're working with, maybe they get the employees from there, but it's, it's always somebody who who sort of has a mental health issue or whatever, you know, like Mm -hmm. they're functional obviously, but they, you know, have a little bit of a mental health issue. And, um, so I, I, I go into this, I used to go in there all the time. I, you know, when I would make the rounds to the thrift stores and I go in there and sitting there on a shelf is a virtual boy and it has the stand and it has the controller. It has, it even had, uh, it had like the AC adapter little thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and it had a, and the funny part, I forgot the name of the game, but it had a game in it, but it was a Japanese game. And it didn't, a lot of times the things in the store didn't have prices on them, which always kind of made me uncomfortable because like, you don't want to be haggling with somebody who's like, like I would feel bad haggling with somebody who has like a mental health issue, right? Like that seems like a scummy thing to do. And um, so I brought it up to the front counter and I said, oh, you know, excuse me, how much is this? And she looks at it and she goes, oh, it's a dollar. And then she kind of looks at me and she goes, well, wait a minute. She's like, what is it? And so I explained to her what it what, what it was, you know, and she goes, oh, then a dollar, you know, like I think she was thinking about yeah. charging me 50 cents, but then I told her it was a video game and she's like, no, you got to pay me the full dollar for that then. <laughs> um, and so I kept that for a while, but I ended up selling, I didn't sell it. I traded wow. it. I, got, I ended up trading it to somebody for a Neo Geo pocket with a bunch of games. That's, that's a good trade. Yeah. I, I mean, that, virtual uh, boy is a cool thing to have. Like just, you know, if you want to stick it up on a shelf or something like that, but it always gave me a headache and, you know, be, just because of the way you have to lean forward and put your face into it, it would make my neck hurt. Like it would have been better if it was like a helmet. Yeah. I think Tri does it. He like always like lays on his back or something like that. Oh, that would be cool. But I mean, it's definitely a cool, um, it's a cool system. I think like if I had it now, I wouldn't get rid of it. Yeah. But this was in I like, that is. like 19, this was in like 2005. Sorry, you were saying. Uh, Cigarette Juice Man is uh, saying that that looks like Encino Man on there. It, it kind of does. I mean, yeah, that's true. Apparently, this Encino Man, he cares a little bit more than uh, the Nugs chilling and grindage. Yeah. What is cigarette <laughs> juice? I don't, know. I don't know. It's like it's like a vape, probably. Oh, maybe. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, here's this Mega Drive International Preview section. Uh, Micro Machines Turbo Tournament 96. I don't know. Awesome. I, I guess. Is that the one? Is that the cartridge that's all weird shaped because it's not licensed? Well, a lot of those were, I think. Yeah. Uh, all those Codemasters games. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I've never played this particular Micro Machines, but some of those Micro Machine games are pretty good. So, um, <laughs> What? I'm just laughing about Nugs chilling and grindage. Sorry, yeah, that's all right. Well, <laughs> you got so you got Rich Retro laughing there too. So yeah, um, I know that's why I when he wrote it out and it was laughing about it, it made yeah. me laugh again. Uh, but then down or, here, I think this is going to be a multi-page uh, ad. Uh, you, ever, you ever play uh, Loaded? I have not, oh, and man. I've always wanted to. That, it's pretty sick, but in a kind of a cool way, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is, I haven't, this is actually a game. I have not written the this, this segment for this game yet, but I've, I've played this game plenty. Um, mm. 
so the first one's PlayStation exclusive, and but Reloaded came out on on both on Saturn and did it, or is it the other way around? It might be the other way around. I don't know, but it's a you, fun. You get the long box of it. Oh, of course, yeah, yeah. Was there ever a non non long box of it? I want to say yes, but I'm not positive about that. Like I feel like I've seen that, mm-hmm. but but maybe I just saw Reloaded and got confused or something. Um, I have heard that the first one's a lot better than the sequel, though. I don't think I've played the sequel, but the first one is just, I think it's a fun game. Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't know this until I started writing the, the episode, but I guess the characters in this game were like designed by some artists from, I believe it was DC Comics. Oh, that's and right. so, you said there was a comic. Yeah, so around the time that this game came out, uh, there were like certain comic books that you would buy that would come bundled with this little mini comic for Loaded. And uh, cause I ended up buying one cause I was going to show it in the right, episode. Right. So it's pretty neat. Uh, oh, Hey, here's a good game. Sega Saturn preview Sega rally championship 95. That's a, is which, directed by, uh, the guy who would go on to do, um, like res and stuff. Uh, directed that game res and, uh, why, why can't I think of his name? I feel I like if we're talking about the same person, I can picture him in my head, but I don't remember his name. Yeah. Um, Res and Child of Eden and like uh, Luminous and. Uh, Somebody in the chat will come All up those, uh, like those um, Synesthesia games. Yeah. Synesthesia, however you say it. Well, anyway, though, Sega Rally Championships, okay. pretty awesome game. Um, mm-hmm. Although this is the. Isn't this the Japanese. Um, because I have the Japanese version, and I think I have the American version, too, and that looks more like the Japanese uh, artwork. Because it, it wasn't called 90, 1995 on it, I don't think, when it came out here, was it? I don't think so. But uh, uh, If you have a way to play games off of like a, like a hard drive or something on your PS2, you should, you should check out the Sega Rally 95 that came out for the PS2 mm-hmm. that, done by M2. It's pretty good. It's kind of a... You know, like a port of the arcade game. Oh, I mean, I have nice. I have a PS2 that's like modded and has a hard drive mm-hmm. in it, but I always have a hard time figuring out how to use that thing. Someone needs to come out with a better, uh, like PS2 ODE or something, because I yeah I really hate the current system. Either that, or yeah. I mean, can't I mean can't you just mod a PS2 at this point by just like soft modding it with a memory card, and then you can just play like. Backups. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I need mm-hmm. to just do that. Yeah, um, uh, it's a, it is the Tetsuya and Mizuguchi that they're talking. That I was well, talking that's about. not even who I was thinking now. of. Um, yeah, what Radbuster saying there? Just use McBoot and hack your memory. Yeah, I need to just do that. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, over here, uh, PlayStation preview for NHL Face Off, which again, like I said, is just. Um, I mean, I prefer. Uh, the NHL series from EA, but, uh, you know, if you ended up buying this in 95 after NHL uh, 96 got canceled, you, you'd you be perfectly happy with that. Yeah. Uh, here's another. Is this, is this the second ad for the Horde? Yeah, it looks like that one's uh, Saturn-centric. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It looks neat. Uh, and then a uh, preview for Bust a Move. On uh, on the 3DO, I don't specifically know how good the 3DO version of Bust a Move is, but mm-hmm. you know, Bust a Move as a whole is a good game. Probably yeah. more more like the kind of game that my wife would uh, right want to yeah. play. Like I could load up Bust a Move on the arcade cabinet, and she'll have fun with I that. I remember my like my college girlfriend really liked it, and in Bust a Move Four, the one that's on the Dreamcast and PS. PS one yeah. I I feel is probably the the best one to get. Yeah. If you're interested in that, I don't think they make them anymore. I don't. I mean, I haven't seen one in a long time. Um, and then probably the most exciting thing here for me, I would say, is uh, this little ad here for uh, Turbo <laughs> Zone Direct. So. Um, it's pretty I mean, late to have a something like that. Um, for sure, and it's only a third of a page ad, but. Um, you know, it's just cool to see a little bit of turbo representation. Yeah. Uh, this late in the game. 
Uh, there you go. A 3DO preview for Shockwave 2, which doesn't really look like my scene. And then, hey, over here is a Jaguar preview. And uh, uh, this is a CD-ROM game, so they're showing the Jag CD setup, which some people say looks like a toilet. It does. And uh, do you, you have a Jaguar at all? I, I don't. I don't you have don't? any... Any, I don't have a Jag. I don't have a Jag CD I, or anything like that. I haven't tried it out yet, but I got this the other day. My uh, Jaguar oh, game drive. Look at that. But uh, I have. I'm a little envious that you're going to play some uh, Atari cards. Trevor McFur. Oh, I got to hate. Trevor McFur is not a good game. But um, yeah, I haven't because uh, I got to bring my Jaguar down here and hook it up. But uh, And I, I actually have the Jaguar CD as well. Oh, wow. Yeah, you, all... you got a you got a good deal on that one too. I think you said before, or you or yeah. you recently saw one. You were said that you saw one for it was selling for four hundred dollars or something like that. Yeah, some ridiculous price. Yeah, I got my jag. I got a jag. Well, I already had one Jaguar, and then I got it was a Jag plus the Jag <laughs> CD plus the Pro controller plus a handful of games, both cartridge and CD, for a hundred bucks on uh, Craigslist. Uh, Nova Nova four twenty three says the Jaguar is like is like the Arby's of nineties video game hardware. You know <laughs> whatever that means. I like that, I like Arby's. That offends me not because <laughs> I like the Jaguar, but because I like Arby's. And in fact, I had Arby's. <laughs> I had Arby's for lunch today. Although, yeah, uh, I had a fish sandwich. I didn't have a roast beef sandwich. Which who normally, goes, if I go to Arby's for fish sandwiches, well. No, normally if I go to Arby's, I'm having roast beef, but they have like a fried fish sandwich. And I was just like, man, that sounds pretty good right now, actually. <laughs> and I got one and it was good. And uh, I got I got crinkle cut fries instead of uh, curly fries. Curly fries? Yeah, oh, I, they geez. were very good. That was on the recommendation. Like of, why uh, even go to Arby's? Because uh, my wife wanted to go to Arby's and I'm. I like Arby's, and I'm never going to say no to that. I'm not a huge, I'm not huge into the crinkle cut fries, or man, or the curly fries rather. So I wanted to try the crinkle cut, but I mean, I got in the line of the drive-through fully intending to get a roast beef sandwich, but then I saw that fried fish and was like, "Yeah, eh, sounds kind of good right now." <laughs> oh, so there's there's Cinescape, yeah, there's Cinescape right Cinescape. there. I'm gonna, I'm going to see if if anybody's selling Cinescape on on eBay. There, I would be very. Surprised if you did not see some issues of Cinescape on eBay. It's probably really expensive. Watch it be at least. Attack of the Mutant Penguins. Yeah, I have not played uh, that game. Assuming that it actually came that out, that should be the first game you play in your game in your Jaguar <coughs> game drive. Oh yeah, Attack of the Mutant Penguins. Well, maybe I mean like that's, the that, reason that is the reason you got it because you you needed to play. Well, the reason it's down here is you know I figured I'll do a live stream. You know, like yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I did a live a Jaguar live stream uh, once, but that was obviously just with whatever physical cartridges that I had. You should but... uh, you should ask John Linneman to be on that stream with you. He could he can talk about really? the Jaguar for a long time. Yeah, he goes to the in Germany. They have this thing called Jagfest that he oh, goes yeah? to. Where it's just like all these people with Jaguar stuff. He he's he's apparently working on a video, like a multi part series where he's gonna look at every single Jaguar game. I, I don't <laughs> he believe he did that with like a thirty two X a while ago, a couple of years back. And Are you being serious? With the Jag. Is this on he a different have, if, if, is this on like a different does he have like a side channel that I don't know about? I mean this yeah. isn't this is going up on yeah. the digital foundry YouTube channel. Yeah, yeah, it's thirty two X all right series or the, with the jaguar yeah it, it it would wow uh defcon i have not played defcon 5 oh rich Re retro says there's a bunch of cinescape issues at my local comic and retro game shop there you go if i go there this weekend yeah. i'll see if i can grab a few and i'll donate them yeah there just let, let us know and uh yeah that'd be awesome yeah, Death Phil Con Phil Con says uh, Jaguar, quote unquote, Jaguar fans just seems like a weird contrarian crowd. Yeah, if you if you were to go to the Atari Age forums and just sort of like read the Jaguar sub forum, I think that contrarian crowd sums it up pretty well, actually. <laughs> uh, next, oh, I was just playing this game, uh, not this one, uh, Space Griffin VF Nine. Um, Mainly because uh, I, I, for reasons I'm not allowed to talk about, uh, I wanted to assess 
the ability of certain upscalers to handle interlaced video. <laughs> yeah. And um, the intro to Space Griffin VF9 is all interlaced. So um, mm -hmm. kind of an interesting game. I wouldn't. You wanted to see how it looked with motion adaptive, the interlacing, right? Hypothetically, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I may or may not have been curious about motion adaptive de interlacing uh, abilities of certain products. Um, but so I wouldn't go so far as to call space Griffin VF nine, like a good game, but, um, it's a game you don't ever hear anybody talk about. And I think it's kind of at least worth checking out. It's sort of like this first person survival horror mech shooter. I mean, which is a kind of an interesting mashup, I think. Right. How many games could you describe using that chain of words? Um, only thing about it that I found like really disappointing is it has really, really, really bad drawing. Like it, it tries to use this, like you can only see like a few feet in front of you, but it's like mm -hmm. after a few feet in front of you, it's just like it fades into black, which I guess they thought would make it look less obvious that there was drawing, but, um, it's pretty Is bad. it better or worse than, than crazy Ivan? Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't really know which one's worse, but. Um, <laughs> space, the, okay, space. I the, the little bit I've played, like I haven't. I was just kind of starting to play the game and do a little bit of writing about it. And the little I played of it made me l at least look forward to checking out the game a little bit mm -hmm. more. You know, like like maybe this would be sort of like weekend rental material, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, space Griffin, and and it's Atlas. I bet you it's yeah. kind of expensive now, just because of that. Oh, probably. And uh, I feel like I've played High Velocity Mountain Racing Challenge. I don't know why. I'm looking at that and thinking, like, I've played that before. But I don't remember when or why. Looks neat. But probably you don't care about racing games, so we'll move on here. Um, mm -hmm. Total Eclipse Turbo. Wasn't that a launch game? Didn't I talk about Total Eclipse? No, 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 no. I'm thinking of a different game. Yeah. Wait. No, I'm not thinking of a different. Wasn't it this game? It may have been. A I can't keep all of these like 3DO conversions on the PlayStation straight anymore. Right. I mean, I didn't know this was a launch. I thought that's later. I covered too. this one, I think, in the launch uh, launch episode, Total Eclipse Turbo. I didn't really think much. I'm surprised that would be the trick of the month, would be something for that game. A level select? Well, just anything. What's, for that, what's that Earthworm Gym? Is that like the Sega CD version or the PC version or something? Um, Windows 95, yeah. <laughs> the ad. It's like... Oh, it's the, the, the maybe... 90s, if, 90s or, maybe if you didn't play with your worm so much. Yeah. Earthworm GM. It's my title screen impression. It was, it was very good. <laughs> uh, tricks of the trade. Oh, Mortal Kombat 3. Uh, trick for the PlayStation. Um... Oh, you can bring up a cheat menu. Oh, I wish I had known that before. Well, actually, I don't know. Have I? I might not have. I know I wrote the section and I recorded the voiceover, but I don't think I've recorded the gameplay footage yet. So maybe I can I can do some cheating. Yeah. Like you know, little peek behind the curtain for people. Sometimes when I'm recording gameplay footage, uh, I cheat if it means I can get better quality gameplay footage. Oh, sorry I if totally that makes that. me a scumbag, but. It does not make you a scumbag. I mean, I use, like, if you want to get a variety of stuff, there's nothing wrong with using, like, invincibility codes. You just make sure to, like, not show you doing stuff that you can only do when you're invincible. Yeah. You know, hey. I mean, there's been times where I've used, like, the like Game Genie's codes to sure. get, like, later levels. Well, you know what's funny? I'm not going to say what game or what episode, but uh, there's one episode of my show where I used an invincibility code, and I ended up using a clip without noticing until it was too late where you can clearly tell that I'm using an invincibility code because I should have died <laughs> and didn't. And not one person has ever pointed it out, which I only think is funny because like, uh, I feel like anything I do on my show, like somebody will, I can make a little typo. I can do some little thing somewhere because you know, enough people watch your show. Somebody's bound to notice, right? I mean, it's just law of averages or whatever. But somehow nobody's ever noticed uh, that. 
Um, now people are going to be looking for it. Yeah, that's why I'm saying it. Somebody, if somebody goes and finds that, anybody who can tell me what that is and finds it, I'll, I'll send you like first person that tells me, I'll send you like a classic gaming a quarterly tape. fan fan crap uh, care package, <laughs> you know, stickers and whatnot. Um, Cyber Dillo. I'm not sure I've ever played Cyber Dillo. It doesn't even sound like something that's real. No. I've never, I've never heard of it. Me either. I don't know. Oh wow, we got <laughs> we got Panasonic 3DO ads coming in, coming in hot. Uh, Scramble Cobra. I haven't played that one either. I've never played that either. Yeah. I have no idea. I used to have one of those. What is that? The that's the FZ. I always get them confused. There's there's the FZ one and the FZ ten. You know, and one of them is the front loading, you know, with right, the, right. Like that's what I have, but I used to have loading. this one, and this is like the one that's a little bit more sought after, just because, uh, yeah, this one doesn't break as easily, and it's much easier to put the, like an ODE in it. Like I have the yeah. mine with the, uh, the the USB mod. Okay, Hot Sauce says this is the FZ10, so. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have an, I don't have an ODE for my 3DO. I think I'm, that would be an example of a system where I think I'm okay just burning games on the occasion that I actually need to play 3DO games. Mm -hmm. Um, here's Panzer General, but it's for the 3DO, not the PlayStation. Uh, Panzer General came out on the PlayStation in 95. Uh, although speaking of which, uh, here's Gex again for the 3DO, but that's another game that, that came out for the PlayStation as well. Uh, mm-hmm. in 95 and then down here is Warhawk which um for the PlayStation a great game. yeah you don't really hear anybody ever talk about Warhawk but like, you go back and like read magazines from back then like Warhawk was a pretty big deal like it was definitely considered like a heavy hitter in the early days of the PlayStation for sure. and, and it's a really fun game uh, that was the same developer i mean it was a single track you know they did the first they did yeah. that they did uh like twisted metal yeah and uh, Destruction Derby. Do they do Destruction Derby, I think? I don't... That doesn't sound right, but I could be wrong. Um, but I think you could maybe get the... Imp- if you just looked at, like, the cover art for Warhawk, you might get the impression that it's like, oh, this is just like a... some kind of helicopter combat sim game or mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, and, I mean, yes, you are flying a, a helicopter type of thing, but it's not a helicopter. It's some kind of weird... But it's got it's more like a of hover, a hover spaceship. Type yeah, thing, some kind of weird thing. Plane. But it, it's got a little bit more of like a sci-fi. Is it? I mean, I don't know. Sci-fi is not even really the right way to describe it. I don't know. It's it's a lot more like fantastical. It's not trying to be realistic in any way at all. And uh, yeah. it's got some pretty awesome, uh, in a cheesy way, uh, full motion video cutscenes. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a good game. It's and it never got a proper follow up. I mean, there was on the PS3 there was a Starhawk, but that's it was yeah. not as as good. That so I didn't realize that that's like it's straight up like Ice Cube in that in that Saturn ad. That is straight up Ice Cube. Yes, I I didn't realize. I mean, does it say that it actually is Ice Cube at it all? It says right ad? here. It says there. Ice Cube on Saturn, and then it has a quote that you know. Probably oh, I see. Okay, I, didn't see that. I, th- I feel like usually this is what you see right here. You don't normally like online, yeah. like, you'll see this, but you don't see this. But um, yeah, I mean, I don't know why specifically they chose Ice Cube, but I mean, he's cool. So yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know who you would, who else would you pick and why? So um. And then a couple more tricks here. Uh, Street Fighter, the movie for the Saturn. I've never played mm-hmm. uh, the Saturn version. I don't know if it's any different than the PlayStation version. The PlayStation version of Street Fighter, the movie, is pretty good. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's unique people, for the time. People dump on it because I think they, they, they played the arcade version, which is not good. And they probably assume that the PlayStation version is, it, version is just like a home conversion, but it's not. Yeah. Yeah. I mean... I, I wish that I had a copy of that, like any kind of any version of it. But oh yeah, I have the PlayStation uh, it, version. I don't have the Saturn version. If I see it someplace, I'd I'd probably get it. Yeah. Uh, some more subscribing things, but then here's an ad for uh, 
for Doom, the PlayStation version of Doom. I was just playing this uh, the other night. Um, this is it's, a really it's fun, a very, very good game. Yeah, one a very of the good version. One of the first videos I ever made, like first YouTube videos I ever made, was I was talking about the PlayStation version of Doom, and uh, it's a bad video, and nobody should watch it. But, um, <laughs> but it's a cool. Uh, the point I was kind of making in that video, and then of course uh, I actually just wrote the segment about Doom uh, for this PlayStation and ninety five video. So this this. Uh, release of doom on the playstation was basically ultimate doom and doom 2 and the two levels that were custom designed for the jaguar release and like six new levels that were designed for the playstation release and there were like enemies from doom 2 inserted into levels from original doom uh for uh for this release obviously it's like lower res than playing on computer because it's 320 mm-hmm. by 240 or i think it's like 256 by 240 whatever it is it's not yeah, 640 yeah. by 480 um but uh there were some things that developers were able to take advantage of some abilities that the playstation had to make the game look a little bit better in other ways so um mm-hmm. i think it's a really good as long as you don't mind playing with a controller um it's a really yeah, good I mean, version. Yeah, I think it plays pretty good on there. Yeah, and it has a kind of a unique soundtrack too. Yeah, yeah, very. Yes, it doesn't have um, what was that guy's name? Bobby Prince. So it doesn't have the Bobby Prince soundtrack from mm-hmm. uh, the PC, which I could see that being a divisive issue because that I mean, you know, PC Doom yeah. has awesome music, but this has a completely different soundtrack, and you know, because obviously with this you have the Red Book audio. But mm. like what plays during the levels, I don't even know if you would even really call it music. I mean, it's like this ambient kind of it's a lot more spooky, right? I mean, like, yeah, Bobby Prince's stuff was more like, you know, digitized, like heavy metal kind of stuff. And it's awesome. But they they were going for like a totally different feel uh, with this yeah. game. But I think it's still really, really good. So I I bought that version of the game. A long time ago, and I, there, there's so there's three versions of it. There's like the long box, mm-hmm. uh, then there's the greatest hits, mm-hmm. uh, regular jewel case. But yeah. there's also a regular jewel case version that is not a greatest hits, and it's like kind of a really really rare variant of it. Hmm. And uh, I remember I got that version, the non greatest hits version, jewel case version, uh, for like the same price as. Um, is the greatest hits version. Yeah, oh, that's when cool. I was at like Magfest one year. Yeah. But then I when I realized that it, it was worth all this money, I sold it and just <laughs> bought the greatest hits version. Um sorry, just real quick because there's people in the chat. It's like somebody mm-hmm. Derek Wilkins has said is always oh, it better than the PC? And then Tim Jenkins says, I'm sorry, but the only version of Doom worth playing is on the PC. So like I would be an example of this. So like in nineteen ninety five I did not have a home computer that could really run Doom without... I'd have to shrink down the viewable size uh, quite a bit in order to be able to play it smoothly. So, Mm -hmm. um, and even in 97, when I got a PlayStation, I was still, I was still, you know, I talked about like in in one of my flashback episodes, like, you know, upgrading my computer to a 386. Like I had that 386 computer until like 1999 because all I was really doing with it was schoolwork and stuff, you know, and like right. 99 is when I got uh, a better computer with like Windows 98. And then that's when I got, you know, AOL, like we were talking about earlier. So the my point is, and I think this probably applies to a lot of people, is that in 1995, you may not have had access to a computer that could competently play Doom. But if you had a PlayStation, you could uh, buy this. And uh, at least that way you could play the game. So... <laughs> Uh, next, uh, this is just codes for Mortal Kombat three for the Genesis. Uh, here's an ad for Zoop. I've only played uh, Zoop a little bit. You know, it's like a puzzle game. Um, is that based on the, uh, the salt and pepper song? That's shoop. Just I, am, I know. I'm just kidding. And that's dirty. You know what shoop means? <laughs> um, yeah, I, this was kind of a weird game. I, I played it and I was like, oh, it's kind of cool, I guess. But 
it kind of reminds me of like Zoom on the on the Genesis. Not because the gameplay is similar, but just because I kind of feel like I guess it's fun to check out now is just sort of an interesting thing. But like, I don't know who was really wanting to buy that back in the day. Yeah. So, yeah. Like the ad here is cooler than the game is. That's not true. It's I mean, I, it's a cool I, game, but what? I mean, it's just one of those games that starts with the letter Z. It's like that one. I have another one, like for the Genesis, called Zool, like Z O O L. Yeah, think it's... I, I think I know it by name only. I haven't played Zool. Yeah. Uh, uh, Off World Interceptor Extreme. Uh, that's another. Um, another one, another PlayStation another game that was a port of a uh, 3DO game, but that was just Off World Interceptor. This is Off World Interceptor Extreme. Uh, and then uh, Air Combat for uh, the PlayStation. I couldn't really find, I was like really looking, you know, in Japan it was called Ace Combat. And then when they released right. it here, they changed the name to Air Combat. And I really can't find anything beyond like nebulous mentions of like for legal reasons they changed the name. But then they had no problem going back to, to right, like get Ace Combat like Two and Ace Combat Three and everything after yeah. that was Ace. So I don't, I, I really was not able to find any kind of definitive reason of like why they changed the name. I've uh, never played that one. I've I played several of the uh, the sequels. Oh, I mean, it's I think it's it's. If you like the games, I mean, it's still pretty good. You know, it's more, they're all pretty similar, I think, in my opinion. So, yeah. Does it have much of a storyline? Because that I, becomes a primary focus of like, oh, later games. No, it's like, you know, you, you start a mission and it gives you like a briefing, but I wouldn't really say there's much of a storyline, no. Because, yeah, I agree. Mm -hmm. If you play like Ace Combat 7 or something, it's like, it gets a lot more. Have you more played any of those new ones? Um. Yeah, a little bit. I bought, I think it was Ace Combat 7. Is that the mm -hmm. last one, 7? Yeah. Yeah, because, like, one Pretty thing good. I was trying to do with this video is, like, you know, there there were a lot of franchises that started on the PlayStation in 95 that still right. exist today. And so I would try to incorporate that by showing, like, here's some gameplay footage of, like, Ace Combat 7. Mm -hmm. And so I played I played idea. enough of it to get some footage, but I didn't play a whole lot because I, I just wanted, like, 10 or 15 seconds of gameplay footage. Yeah. Uh, here's a PTO. game I, I have, but I haven't actually played. Um, PTO. I have the uh, Sega Saturn version, but um, I I can't wrap my head around those like Koei. Uh, is this like one of those like hex games. hex grid kind of games? Yeah, it's like that, and like you know, I think of like Gem Fire and Romance of the Three Kingdoms. I, it's mm -hmm. just, it's just too much. I can't. I it, I would love to understand how to play them, but I yeah. I get it. Don't have the patience for it. Yeah. What's Wild Woody for the Sega CD? It's like, isn't it like pencil? Looks like that way, guy. yeah. It's that's. I think that's kind of an expensive game on the system Is now. Um, yeah, but, but you, you see people talking about it because it's. I mean, it's it's called Wild Woody. Right. But right. It's. Um, I, I played it briefly on on my Mega SG, and you know, it's it's not great. No. Um, down here, though, is a, a cheat for the first Wipeout uh, for the PlayStation. Uh -huh. So access the you can access Rapier class with a cheat code instead <laughs> of having to earn your way there. Um, boy, the first Wipeout, uh, it's funny. I, I hadn't really played it that much because uh, I think the first Wipeout that I owned was XL. And then later I bought Wipeout 3. And I did own uh, uh, Nijicon, Nejicon, mm -hmm. Nejicon. Uh, I bought an Edgycon like in the nineties, like in like the late nineties, uh, specifically mm -hmm. to play it with Wipeout. But, um, if you play like, like Wipeout Excel or Wipeout three, I think that those play okay with a standard controller, mm -hmm. but the first Wipeout, I think it, it handles pretty badly with a standard controller. And so if you play the first one with an Edgycon, it, I mean, it, the game's like 10 times better. Yeah, I've I've heard that playing it with that controller changes it. It's oh yeah, like it's a re, it's a real game changer. Like it's so much more yeah. fun. Absolutely, it is. Yeah. In fact, that was because that's another example. I bought whatever the last Wipeout game was that it came out for PS4. 
Mm-hmm. It was Wipeout HD or something, and I think it was just like a yeah, HD like Omega collection. Yeah, yeah, it was Omega collection. Yeah, and mm-hmm. so you know you can't use the Nejicon with a PS4, right? And I it made me really hate. Like I'm trying to play the game, but it's like you know I'm trying to twist the controller in my hand, and and yeah, it's a shame that they didn't. I mean, I get why not, but it's a shame that you can't use a Nejicon with a PS4. That they didn't make like a PS4 version. I will say that playing the PS4 version with the with VR is pretty neat. Oh, I can only imagine. I don't. I've, I don't have a. I've actually never played VR in any way. Like I don't. Uh, it's 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 a lot cooler than it, it sounds. No, I I fully like. I think it would be cool. I, I'm not saying I wouldn't like to check it out. I just never have. Actually, I have a friend that's really into VR, so all I would have to do is go over to his house. But yeah. Uh, we got yeah, here. Oh, here's killer a, and yeah, corpse killer. I don't really, yeah, I've never played corpse killer. Oh, that's. A, but here we have an ad for a game we were just talking about, Warhawk. Yeah. So I I see those uh, those smoke trails on the missiles. Those yes. Smoke trails are a big deal. Yes. For me. Uh, strategy for primal rage. Uh, this is another game. Uh, I'm going to have to cover this game, and I have not. Uh, this one I haven't done yet, so I don't really. Mm-hmm. It, I don't know. It's I, from what I understand, like this game got pretty good reviews back then. Like, but to me, it doesn't. Like, I would assume this uh, yeah, game I don't sucks. Think it's very fun to play, either. But yeah, it just, we'll it see. Feels I, too choppy. I haven't. Um, like I said, I haven't done anything with this game yet, so I don't really have anything to say about it. Uh, there's a, a 3DO, you know. I don't want to say generic or whatever, but you know, it's just a 3DO ad for not any single game in particular. Yeah. For snow job. A lot of a lot of full motion video on there. Yeah. And it FMV was already starting to really lose favor at this point. Yeah. Uh here's Virtua Fighter 2, though. That's um Oh yeah. You know, that's a big deal. So I, I assume that, oh it is for the Saturn, Saturn version, huh? That's surprising. I for for some reason I feel like the Saturn version was a little bit further off at this point. Yeah, no, I think I mean it came out pretty pretty quickly. Yeah. Good game. I mean it's it still looks really good. I mean that's the game that's four eighty I during gameplay. Yeah. No, it and, looks, really uh, nice. looks way better than the first one. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that is a significant jump. You don't, you don't see jumps like that between sequels these days. Yeah. Primal Rage, uh, by the way, uh, according the to the chat, was a weekend rental. Yeah. He'd probably be sick of it like the first night. By Friday night, he'd be, be sick of it. Well, this is a pretty good um, strategy guide for Virtua Fighter 2. Yeah. I mean, I only played it. I I never played two in the arcades. Now that I think about it, I remember yeah. uh, playing the first one in the arcade and being like, "It looks cool, but I hate how they jump and they're like float in the air for so long." Yeah. Um, I like having stuff like this. Like when I when I recorded the gameplay footage for Tekken, I actually brought down a magazine that had like this exact same kind of feature oh, so in it. D- it's just easier than trying to have like, you know, you go to like game facts or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. and it's like everybody's like FAQ has to be like, you know, 10,000 words long. And it's like, I really just want a move list, man. Yeah. And it's nice to have the whole move list right there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, solar Eclipse for oh. the Saturn. Yeah, I, I just want to say that Nova 423 says, remember Virtua Fighter's Jeffrey McWild? They just perfectly give us such a fanciful last name. Just how wild is McWild? And uh, Jeffrey McWild is like one of the best characters, character names in any video game ever. Really? I had a, fr- I had a friend named Jeff, and we, we call him Jeffrey McWild. And my other thing I like about uh, Virtua Fighter 2 is when Sarah Bryant says, even good guys blow it. Oh, ho, 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 ho. sorry. Don't be. Don't be. Uh, <laughs> another Namco ad. Uh, this one for uh, Air Combat. So, see what I mean? It's like the uh, same. 
the, the same style as the other one we saw. But yeah. which I don't. I mean, I just don't. I don't know. I mean, it, you look at the graphics in that game, and it was just the coolest thing to me that you know you could fly anywhere. Yeah. And have these structures you could fly in because you look at that like flying along the bridge. Like mm-hmm. I would look at it and I would just imagine like flying like along that bridge and like flying in between the yeah the uh, uh, towers there. And uh, before that, the only thing I'd played that was even remotely close to that is like F-22 Interceptor on the Genesis. Yeah. Which is kind of a, you know, it's, a, it's a, a, like a polygon based yeah. uh, flight simulator kind of type of game. But this is just like a whole new level. Yeah. Like, it's just like, it blew me away. You could like fly under the bridge and yeah. stuff like that. You know, going, going back to what I was saying earlier about, you know, the days of going to thrift stores, you know, and looking for games, mm-hmm. you know, and like, Every thrift store, it's like you you just knew where the video game section would be, but you'd go there and it would just be like, you know, if somebody had already been there and cleaned it out, like there would just be sports games. Sports games and like Super Mario Duck Hunt. But like the other game I used to, I feel like I used to run into constantly was that F-22 Interceptor game. Mm -hmm. Like it would be like, you know, a bunch of EA sports games, maybe like, you know, sports talk football and then like F-22 Interceptor. I and mean, it's just one of those games, one of those EA games. That... Dude, this is sweet. So this here's a this is a, a strategy guide for Warhawk, but look, this is all like hand. Well, I don't know if it's hand. It looks pretty hand drawn. I mean, I don't. But you know, I don't know when the last time you played Warhawk is. But like, this is the first level, you know, where you have to go uh, to this pyramid, you know, and you 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 take out these all these towers are shooting at you, you know, but. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to blow you have to blow them up and then like you know, you have to take out all these things, these little gun turrets around here, and then like the the pyramid comes like rising out of the ground, and then you have to fly through the middle of it and grab that little like I don't yeah. know, I forgot what it was, like an energy I mean, pot or something something, but um And that's the thing, you know, like having something like that free roaming was just was mind blowing because yeah. you had you had, had experienced stuff like that in say like Star Fox. That's all on rails. You yeah. Know? But one of my favorite things in Star Fox is the third level with like the uh, like the space armada, and you fly inside other ships, and you got to destroy their core, and you fly out the back as they blow up. Yeah. Everything, but here it was you were able to completely free roam. Yeah. Environments like that. Yeah. Here's the second the second stage. You had to fly through this canyon. I remember that. I had kind of a hard time with that. Um, and then oh yeah, this one was cool. Like this kind of like what you're talking about. This airship. Um stage because you were Mm -hmm. like i don't remember i don't know how much of the game you've played but you know in this stage you're like up you know higher up in the sky and there's all these airships around but you actually can fly into that kind of stuff you know like i mean like the back would be like a hangar and you'd fly into the hangar and you'd fly all the way into the ship and it was pretty neat um yeah i mean that's something that I, i i love like big like airship battles or space armada type yeah. battles. Yeah. Um, and I just wanted to flip back to this page because here's this ad for Agile Warrior F-111X, which mm-hmm. just like when you, you know, you had air combat and you had Warhawk. If you've ever played uh, Agile Warrior, like it's really, really not good. And like, I don't, <laughs> I always, like, I always see stuff like that and I'm like, man, like somewhere out there was like, you know, the guy that, got this game instead of air combat or or warhawk you know like just made a bad decision and you know there's a reason you don't hear about agile warrior anymore right yes yeah uh oh that's kind of cool there's an ad for SimCity 2000 uh well for the saturn but i just you know i love SimCity, so yeah Although I didn't really play 2000, like I played a crap load of the original SimCity, and then I played a lot of SimCity 3000, like when mm-hmm. I was in college, and then I played SimCity 4 uh, when that came out. And you know what's kind of funny about that is like I got SimCity 4 like right when it came out. I don't know if you are you even into that kind of stuff. Uh, all right, that's a, I, that's I would, a, that's I would a like no. to be, but but you're not. I mean, that's fine. Um, I'm not. Well, so I got SimCity 4 like right when it came out, but kind of a unfortunate thing about that game. Like 
So at that time, I had a computer that was good enough that I could pretty much play any game that came out with like pretty high settings. But when SimCity 4 came out, like there, it's almost like there wasn't a computer that existed yet that was good enough to like play the game smoothly. Yeah. And um, at this time when I was in college, I had this part time job. Uh, on the weekends, I would sell tomatoes at the farmers markets. Like I worked, like the, it's a long story, but like there was a guy I, I worked with, like in the chemistry department, and he had a side gig growing hot house tomatoes or greenhouse tomatoes, and then they would sell them at the farmers markets, and so they would hire people to sell the tomatoes for them. So like I would get up in the morning, like before the sun came up, and drive to his farm, and there would already be a pickup truck that was like loaded down with boxes of tomatoes and like the cash box was already in the cab. Like all I had to do was show up and like jump in the truck and drive to whatever farmer's market I was going to. And the farmer's market that I sold at on Sundays was in Walnut Creek, uh, you Mm -hmm. know, Walnut Creek, California, obviously, which I don't know if it's still the case or not, probably not. But at the time, um, Maxis headquarters was in downtown Walnut Creek. Ah. And so I'm there selling the tomatoes and this guy comes up and he's wearing a polo shirt that says Maxis on it. I said, oh, you work for Maxis? And he said, yeah. And I started chewing his ear off, giving him a ration of crap about, about SimCity 4 and like, why doesn't it run better and whatnot? You know, cause like, oh, it's such a good game, but like, I can't play it. And he's like, yeah, we know it's like an issue with the game. But <laughs> like, how often do you play a game and there's something you don't like about it and you have the opportunity To, like, like tell the developer to their face, you know? (laughs) Like, I wasn't a jerk to him or anything, but it was just like, oh, I love SimCity so much, but this game is, like, not unplayable. It doesn't run good. Yeah, it doesn't run good. Virtually unplayable. Yeah. Yeah. Well, SimCity 2000, uh, I might have the PS1 version of it. Yeah. Uh, just because this, if you go to a convention, that's one of the. It's a pretty common game. Yeah. And uh, if you need, if you need backup double jewel cases for the PlayStation, that's the game they get. I mean, I would. I would just buy a double jewel case like online and just use that. Well, but I mean, a lot of the, if you try to get something new now, they're just made out of like a cheaper plastic. That's true. I you know, I don't. I, I mean, I don't. I hate. I hate cannibalizing games to get parts for other games, but I, I mean, yeah. I understand what you're saying. And I do, I hate the fact that when you buy jewel cases now, you can tell like the plastic is like way more flexible and feels super cheap. Yeah. Yeah. I hate that. Uh, next page. What Sendai's got you. Co- oh, this is pretty cool. Um, like other, these are, I don't know. Would you call these books? Not, yep. What do you call stuff like this? It's not really a book, but it's probably something you'd buy on a newsstand. But you know, it costs more than a regular magazine, like like like, like, like a book or something. Type thing. Yeah, Ultimate Guide to Fighting Games, Meet yeah. Guy Doom, EGM's Guide to PlayStation Games. I wouldn't mind picking that up. EGM Guide to Saturn Games. Yeah, like like an annual. I guess yeah. that would be a good way to put it. Ninety six Video Game Buyer's Guide. CGR's 1996 Buyer's Guide. What's CGR? Hmm. Computer Gaming Review or something? I don't remember. Not yeah, Classic well, Game Room, though. No. That's the only. That's the real CGR. Oh, we're still still on about Warhawk over here. Uh, yeah. What's? I mean, that's that's what you get when you get EGM two. I guess. Yeah. Quarterback Attack, that's a PC game, so we don't care about that. Uh, still, um, oh, like this is Quarterback Attack with, with Mike Ditka. I thought that was like a, or was that like a different game? I thought it was Quarterback Attack had Mike Mike Ditka in it. I only know about the, there was the Genesis Mike Ditka game. That's the only Mike Ditka game I know about. Yeah. Um, that, that's the final level of uh, Warhawk, so that's a tough level. Uh, Chips and Bits was still around. What's that game? Hell. Oh no, that was. This is the last level, Stormland. Straight up, straight up called Hell. Well, I guess yeah, it's like a whole. Because yeah, this this thing sucks. (laughs) Got the got the whole game. Yeah. I thought Quarterback Attack had had Mike Mike Dick in it. I don't know, man. 
Oh, Cigarette Juice Man says, could you make a CGQ hat like the Cal State Davis hat? I'd buy one. That would be cool. Like, if I could get this exact same C with just a GQ inside of it, that would be sweet. You probably could. I, I could, but it's the kind of thing where, like, I'd have to buy a bunch of them, right? Yeah. And then, like, how many of those are you really going to sell, you know? Yeah. They're not going to sell, like, mixtapes, that's for sure. Um. Yeah, so here, this is kind of a similar deal uh, to what the guy, well, this is the exact same deal over here, but um, the guy that wrote the letter in, because it says right here. Oh, yeah, uh, $100. Trade in 10 games and get 100 bucks off. Uh, or over here, you could trade in five games and then get any of these games for nine ninety nine. But I'm just saying that's not a bad deal because it even says down here you can, it can be... Uh, Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, 3DO, Saturn, or Jaguar. So, I mean, the idea that you might have five, like, basically by 1995 worthless Sega Genesis games is not that much of a stretch. Right. Um, although, the only thing I think is funny is it's like, when you trade in working Sega Genesis, and then in parentheses, excluding Sega CD and 32X. So, like, really, somebody comes in there with, like, Lunar and Lunar 2, and you'd be like, I'm sorry, that's not part of the, I that's not part probably. of the deal back then probably yeah uh i didn't didn't realize that disc world was was a long box game yeah there was a 95 um 95 playstation release compatible with the playstation mouse what about uh uh what are your thoughts on jumping flash i like it i like it a lot i think it's a really yeah. fun game i got i got all three of them when i was in japan i got the japanese versions yeah like like two came with uh, part one with it, and then the third one was like Robert Robert Mandu, yeah, or something like that. I just re I recorded like cool. I recorded like hours of jumping flash footage, and now I, I think I'm not going to be able to use any of it. Oh, really? So, Why? Well, you know, I mean, it's a long story, but you know, I had to, f you know, well, you had the same problem, right? Like we had to stop using Streamcatcher, right? And so oh, I, was, right, right. I was using Amarek because, I mean, it seems like it does a really good job, but uh, I recorded a couple of games using Amarek for that video I uploaded yesterday. And when uh -huh. I tried to import them into Final Cut, it said, like, this is not compatible or whatever. Oh, the AVI, because they're AVI. Because they're AVI. Probably. Well, yeah, but I mean, I think I've imported other AVI. I mean, I don't know what the actual codec is. I don't remember. But but I recorded, like, a, a bunch of, like, Twisted Metal and and... Uh, like mm. I said, jumping flash, and I'm gonna have to see if I can convert it or something because I don't want to have to re. Yeah, try to try to hand but, handbrake. Um, through that handbrake. Program. Yeah, I could, or I, I could just use um, I forgot what it's called, V VLC. Yeah. Um, I don't know. We'll see. So now, so now I'm using OBS. So are you happy now? Like I finally, <laughs> I have no other choice. So I'm gonna use OBS. There's, there's no other choice. Um, and then just point out a couple games here that don't have the correct box art, uh, Twisted Metal yeah. and NHL Face Off and Jumping Flash and maybe Discworld. I don't, off the top of my head, I'm not sure what the Discworld box art looked like, but for sure, probably. Twisted Metal, Jumping Flash, and NHL Face Off, those are not the correct um, boxes. Uh, oh, speaking of Twisted Metal, here's an ad for Twisted Metal. Oh, yeah. So. Twisted or Twister Mental. As one, huh? of the, when I worked at Electronics Boutique, somebody came in and said, do you have Twister Mental? You should have kicked him out of the store. I did. Yeah. I didn't even hesitate. Good. Uh, cool game. <laughs> I don't know. I like Twisted Metal. It's pretty fun. It's more fun, maybe two-player, but... Um, yeah. I had fun playing that one. Uh, oh, and then here we get into a strategy for uh, Twisted Metal... And uh, then over here, this is a pretty cool looking ad, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, it is. Uh, XCOM UFO defense for uh, for the PlayStation. Uh, that's it, for anybody that doesn't video? know. Like that's a very beloved game for yes. home computer. Um, I had some friends who were really, really into the PS One version of this. Yeah. And I just remember going over to their house and watching them play it for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. And you know, you always make your squad named after your friends and everything like that. It's it's yeah. it was it was one of those games that 
especially that version had like really long load times. It's just a very slow game to play. Yeah. Uh, but I would say the same thing I said about Doom. It's like you you know, maybe somebody didn't have a home computer and like this way you can right. play XCOM. You know, so I'm not really into people who thumb their noses at like these console ports, you know, because it's like, you have to understand like, yeah, maybe you have a home computer. So to you, this is not good. But for someone that doesn't have a home computer, like now they can play XCOM. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, The the new games are pretty good from what I understand as well. Oh, I haven't, I haven't tried any of them. So I don't have anything to say, but uh, so now I guess we're going to get a bunch of twisted metal uh, strategy, which, um, which is cool, but then we also have an ad here for uh, Dirt Track, Dirt Tracks FX. Yeah, it's like um, one of the few third-party Super FX games. Yeah, doesn't really look like something I would enjoy, if I'm being completely honest. <laughs> so doesn't doesn't Twisted Metal have like a character that's like, it's like an like an ice cream truck? Yeah, like, yeah. Like a, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Because it's like what? on the cover, like every single. Oh, oh, yeah, of, yeah. Of so I forgot the name. The name of the tr- the name of the tr- of the ice cream truck is Sweet Tooth. Yeah, I can't remember the name of the clown. Like the clown is not Sweet Tooth. The truck is the clown is like needles something or other. But <laughs> um, but it's funny because like in the first Twisted Metal, it was just another. It, it's just one of the characters that you can pick, but then it, it sort of became like the mascot for uh, the Twisted Metal series. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> uh. Name Sweet Tooth. It just says, I don't know, something. Yeah. Makes me think of, a, like, there's this one guy I went to high school that, like, had really bad teeth, and people had a, came up with it, like, some people came up with, it, like, a nickname that made me think of Sweet Tooth. The, the, the name Sweet Tooth makes me think of, but I, I'm not going to say it here All on right. the stream. I'll You'll tell, tell me I'll later, tell though. Afterwards. Okay. Uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Uh, game, did you ever, did you ever watch? Uh, no. No, it, it was on after I was kind of out of that phase. Yeah. Where I would have been, been a fan. I just, I can't get into it even now. I just think it's. I mean, I don't. I don't know for a fact like what year that show started, but I feel like my memory is that it was like maybe like my freshman year of high school. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, yeah, it would have been very late like that. I don't really care too much about. uh, I don't really care too much about. It it was it was not Snaggletooth Rich Retro, although uh, no, no, I I think it was something. something. It does start with oh, oh, your friend. Sorry, or the guy you knew. Yeah. Um, well, I don't know. So Retro Mags, Brian, you're, you're saying that Mighty Morphin Power Rangers started in 93? Because then that would have been like my sophomore year of high school. That actually sounds more correct. Because like yeah, I used to watch, then, even would've... even when I was in high school, like just for, I guess you can't really call it nostalgia at that point. But like, you know, when I woke up in the morning, I would just throw on the TV and uh, they would always show... Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at 7 a.m. And so I would turn it on and watch a little bit and go jump in the shower and then, you know, keep watching it while I got dressed or whatever. And then yeah. when uh, Power Rangers came out, they gave it that 7 o'clock time slot and they they pushed uh, Ninja Turtles to like 6 o'clock in the morning. And I remember that really like pissed me off, you know. Yeah, because you can't, I mean, you wouldn't be able to watch it anymore, I guess. Well, I'm not going to get up. I'm not going to set an alarm well, and get gonna, up yeah, early. It was just, you know, it happened to be on at a good time, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, more. So, I mean, you know, I guess it bears pointing out, I mean, Twisted Metal has a ton of characters to uh, choose from, which makes the, gives the game a, a crap load of replayability just because, like, yeah. they're all different. Like, they have different weapons and... Like some of them are, are, are drive slow, others are fast. Some of them have a lot of armor. Some of them have none. Like, but they try to have them all, you know, sort of balanced. When you look at a lot of those games on the PS One and, and on the PS Two, especially from Namco, they were they were they were so they were really really meaty. There's yeah. so much stuff, like extra stuff in them. Yeah, that is is pretty crazy. I was, so I see the the Beavis and Butthead in Virtual Stupidity. Yeah, which. Uh, is like a point point and click game. Yeah. And uh, 
I've, I've never played it, but I've heard that it is very good. It sounds and fun. Like, I didn't really know that it was a point and click game until you just said that. Yeah, but you, you can play obvious, it like on the Mister using the, um, uh, the, the Scum VM uh-huh. on there. Uh, but what's interesting is it actually got a copy in Japan. It got a what? A console uh, uh, release? It got a PS1 version in Sorry, Japan. You, you cut out for a second there. So, um, so th- there's, there's a, on the PS1, there's in Japan, there's a uh, version of uh, Beavis and Butthead in Virtual Stupidity. Wow. But it's all in Japanese. Like there is like Japanese Beavis and Butthead, yeah, voice actors. That'd be kind of funny to hear. <laughs> yeah, that I I wouldn't mind checking that out. That would be fun. I don't know if that would be appropriate <laughs> for a live stream or not, but um, it'd be fun just to play it. Uh, real yeah. quick, we got five dollars from Vincent DeBellis. Oh, thank Love you. your channel. Thanks for all the entertainment. And yeah, I haven't had a Salisbury steak in a while. I need to I need to rectify that. <laughs> you uh, are you a, much of a Salisbury steak man? I I yeah. I I, I To me maybe Salisbury I've never had a real one. I feel like well, Salisbury steak is something that was always like a flavor of yeah. uh, you know, you you get soup or like like a specific kind of soup that has Salisbury steak pieces in it. I'd eat that if there was Salisbury steak soup. That'd be awesome. But no, I was just going to say, like, I've had like, quote unquote, real Salisbury steak that like my mom has made or actually, no, I've, I've made it too, like made it from scratch. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, for me, it's like, I would rather have like a frozen, like Salisbury steak. Like to me, that's a, like, that's the only kind I've ever had. Like that's a Salisbury steak. And so when you have like a real one, it's like, eh, this is a little too fancy. Like I just want, you know, like a Swanson. <laughs> yeah. So you keep we keep going like now we're you know now we got three more. Um, There's a twisted. lot of characters. There's a lot there. of characters, man. Uh, and then here is uh, NBA in the Zone, which yeah. Uh, was yeah. the first, not the first basketball game for the PlayStation, but I guess the first, you know, pseudo simulation, you know, because mm-hmm. I mean uh, NBA Jam Tournament Edition was a uh, launch game, but um, that obviously is not a simulation. Right. Um, I think Konami released uh, two, I believe it was two sports games on the PlayStation 95. There was this one, and then there was a baseball game. I think it was Bases Loaded 95 or Bases Loaded 96 or something like, something like that. It was like the last. Konami really tried to make that bases sports, loaded game. Their, their sports games happen. Yeah. They, they never seem to really pick up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, outside of. Uh, oh, here you go. Here he is. Double dribble. They don't say what his name is. There is. Sweet Tooth. Sweet Tooth. There's another yeah. uh, ashy pad. Like, that one doesn't look so bad. This one looks all right, actually. Um, this is a Super That's Nintendo uh, controller, but it's got the sort of six-button layout uh, more similar to, like, a six-button Genesis controller. So this seems like... Um, and it, it even says on here, you know, specialized fighter pad. So that looks like that would be really good uh, for yeah. playing, like, Street Fighter Two iterations. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. That D pad looks kind of suspicious. But I don't know. I've never I've never seen that controller. So, but oh, it still has the shoulder buttons though. So that's kind of nice. Like you can yeah you can do it you either way. Uh, oh, now now we're gonna get into the um, different levels. Each of the levels. Oh yeah, I mean they're the really going one, all in. Um, you yeah, know, we're getting freeway. We're that's getting... my favorite level. I think of of Twisted Metal freeway. Um, then this is kind of cool. Um, the Lucas Arts Archives Volume One. Uh, you get Day of the Tentacle, Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, Rebel Assault, and I can't tell what Star Wars game yeah, that it, one. Uh, it says Star Wars Screen Entertainment. Yeah. Oh, but it I'm also says. Like... So it says you get Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, Sam and Max Hit the Road, awesome game. Rebel Assault Special Edition, Day of the Tentacle, and Star Wars Screen Entertainment. I don't mm. know what that is. But um A lot of people will say that the Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis is is the true Indiana Jones four. Yeah. I mean, I always wanted to play it back then. I remember being I very I... envious. And I bought the uh the Wii version of a game called uh Indiana Jones and the 
staff of the emperors or the emperor's staff or something like that. Yeah. Because it has an unlockable oh. uh, da- uh, Fate of Atlantis. Yeah, it. that's pretty cool. Uh, you can also then, play that on the Mister as well. Yeah, it's, Nova. It's Nova rightly asks, "No Monkey Island." Yeah, what's up with that? Like to me, like Day of the Tentacle and Monkey Island two go like hand in hand. Well, not only that, but I mean, if you're going to put Day of the Tentacle on there, like you need to put Maniac Mansion on there because you know you need. Yeah, I mean, to... it's a continuation of the story, so yeah. Nobody wants to play like the second entry. That's the only one you have available. Yeah. Nobody wants that. Nobody. For sure not. Um, so more Twisted Metal. Impact Racing for the PlayStation and Sega Saturn. Same here. Oh, check that out, though. We're going to have to zoom out a little bit. Ooh. Get that on oh. there. Road Rash. That is, I for... mean, I could talk about Road Rash quite a bit. I mean, this version. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, try and I get into a big disagreement because he does not oh, like the, the, the character design. Like yeah. the um, kind of cartoony look to the characters in that game, and I think it's just such a cool game. It is like it's easily the best Road Rash game, and they were never able to uh, top it. And it has maybe the best, at least definitely in my opinion, like top five licensed soundtracks of all time. Yeah, and uh, it sucks. It, I'm gonna because yeah. I'm gonna have to. This is this is gonna be the final game that gets covered in that video I'm making. And I'm um, going to have to turn off the in-game off. music. You know, that's too bad. Well, no. I mean, the, the license music only happens, like, over menus and stuff. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not during races. Oh, well, that's better, at least. There, it's only in, during races in the, uh, the Sega CD version, for some uh, reason. Well, I don't uh, know if you... But it is, like, it's a great game. I don't know if you saw um, in, in my Genesis video from yesterday, you know, I admitted... That uh, I I no longer have a negative opinion of Road Rash. Like, oh really? It's so you. Well, because you know I think I I you know upset some folks in the uh, PlayStation launch video when I said that Road Rash was overrated. Um, uh-huh. I forgot why, but uh, I ended up playing uh, a bunch of uh, Road Rash for the Sega Genesis and. Uh, mm-hmm. I ended up. The more I played it, I I could I couldn't stop playing it. You know, like I kind of got past <laughs> the things about it that I initially hated, and just had a really really good time with it. So yeah. Um, so have you played this one very much yet? Uh, not very much. No, I oh, have played it a little bit. It's great. I think it's the I I love the way the FMVs accentuate the beginning. I mean, it's just like it's a really good use of FMV compared yeah. to just you know, completely taking over the whole game. Yeah. Like it had in other versions. Uh, next over here, we got Thunderstrike and Shellshock. U.S. Gold, huh? I mean, those are, neither. I've never played either one of those. I played Thunderstrike a little bit, um, but I think that's mm-hmm. the kind of game where I think it got about two or three sentences worth of coverage Yeah. Uh, in the video, just because it's like, you know, unremarkable. Uh, official Babylon 5 uh, Collector's Magazine. I bet Smoke Monster's not here anymore. Uh, Smoke Monster <laughs> and Mrs. Smoke Monster have apparently been binge-watching uh, Babylon 5. Like, every night they wow. watch, like, one or two episodes or something. So um, so he should get this. Official yeah. Babylon 5 Collector's Magazine. <laughs> Uh, and then this, this might, oh, this is another one of these, uh, what I was talking about earlier, like these uh, advertising sections. Yeah, uh, you know, it's like ooh, PSX Quick Take, your guide to the PlayStation, and you might think, oh, that sounds cool, but um, it's just an advertisement for looks like Mindscape, so that makes it a little bit less uh, fun. Well, that and the fact they're talking about Chess Master 3D, that's not really um, sweetening the deal. Uh, are you seeing anything in this magazine that you are going to use, and maybe fit into your video? I mean, ads for sure. I always, I always make sure yeah. I pull those out just in case I want. Like ads make a good. It's like a B roll substitute kind of thing. Like, yeah. I don't know what you would call that. For sure. But uh, other than that, uh, well, I always like. So I already did. That's like one of the first things I did work on the video is I went through all of these magazines from back then, and mm-hmm. um, you know, I, I get the the magazine scans from Retro Mags, 
and right. And those are all like individual um, JPEGs of each page, right? And so I'll copy out pages that I think I might want to use. So it's like all the ads, pre if it's a preview page of a certain game or re- reviews. Because mm-hmm. um, sometimes, it, you know, you know, if you're going to mention like how a game reviewed back then, it's nice to show a couple of reviews on the screen. Yeah, for sure. Um, cyber speed, that's another uh, kind of example. Like I was talking about how, you know, if you got stuck with um, that F111X game instead of getting Warhawk or like if you got cyber speed instead of Wipeout, um, that would suck. Yeah. Uh, Warhammer, I don't know anything about it. Yeah, I mean, Games Workshop, you know, I just know Warhammer is, uh, you get the little... Isn't that like a tabletop game? Paint. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it is. it is. But there's been lots of little, uh, lots of games based on it. I read that uh, Robin Williams was really into Warhammer. Really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Here's this Raven project again. This is the exact same page. Here, Jim Fisher, favorite food, teriyaki beef. Just they're going all in. <laughs> favorite food and uh, favorite food, teriyaki beef. Uh, it says belly button lint. Yes. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, cyber speed uh, ad. It's kind of an odd ad. Although, hey, he's using a yeah. safety razor. That's what I use. Um, they had a that that ad earlier that just had sort of those annuals, as you called them, had this uh, yeah. this golden eye. Oh no, no, that was a golden eye strategy guide. No, it couldn't have been. Golden eye wasn't out. Yeah, yet. yeah, it's not. Oh, out it's right yet. here. So, oh yeah, here you go. Official golden eye collectors magazine. Yeah, it's for the movie, not the game. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not really <laughs> into. Yeah. Um, not really into James. Mujango saying, "I bet Jim Fisher has lint in his in his belly bee." Yeah, absolutely, he does. If he's still around, you know. I mean, this is a. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, this is a 25 year old magazine. He looks like he's probably in his 40s in that picture, and he was eating a lot of teriyaki beef. So. Yeah, he's definitely got belly button lint. Yeah. I. Is, is there actually a character in Loaded named Fwank? <laughs> Fwank, I love that. I get. I don't. Yes, I mean, there's definitely that character. I guess he's called Flank. <laughs> Flank. Kind of making fun of speech impediments, if you ask me. But when when, when, uh, when Marvel vs. Capcom three was coming out, yeah, and they announced that it's going to have Frank West, yeah, from uh, from what is it, Dead Rising was going to be in it. Yeah, I remember the the first trailer, first graphic that came out of Frank West had his name as 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 flank west <laughs> hmm. like written on the graphic yeah just f-l-a-n-k flank west hmm. i had to, I, it, it, the image had been sort of scrubbed from the internet i had to put in some actual wow time and effort to find it yeah and do some digging yeah. um <laughs> oh my my um character of choice is this captain captain hands Captain uh, hands. He's got like fl- flintlock guns, like one in each hand. Uh, um, Captain. But I haven't recorded the the loaded uh, footage yet, so this uh, this guide might come in handy. Uh, and I don't know what Storm is. Uh, that must be a '96 game because it's not on my list. Yeah. Um. So yeah, now we're gonna have like multiple pages of loaded. Um strategy and then i don't know what's uh jim lee's wildcats that was an image comic i've, yeah. I've read Wildcats for like a, a minute just because i like the cover yeah yeah i don't know anything about the game though um oh here you want to have a well there's more loaded obviously but uh you want to apply for a job with konami yeah where were they they I were looked- located in buffalo grove illinois oh yeah yeah Is I, that, I, like that would a, make sense Buffalo Grove, Illinois, because when uh, Tom Dubois, uh, you know, did art for them, yeah, they were based in Illinois. Hmm. Well, they would. They, it says relocation packages available. Wow. Dang. 
Uh, all right, more of this, but more importantly, here is a Destruction Derby uh, ad. And uh, I've already completely finished the Destruction Derby segment. I don't remember if this ad yeah. made it into the video or not. But um, this is a game that I, so I didn't, I mean, I've talked about this before, but, um, uh, you know, I didn't get my PlayStation until 1997, but this is a game that I bought. Like I bought the greatest hits version of Destruction Derby. Oh right, and, you um, knew it was something you wanted to play. Yeah, in fact, it might have been the first greatest hits game that I that I ever bought. But um, yeah, I I mean, I love Destruction Derby. I think it's such a good game. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, that's, I, that's I, probably I, why I already finished that segment for the show. Is I had you know fun making it. So yeah. Oh, here's that's kind of interesting. There's a an ad for um, well, it's not was it like it's like a baseball card trading game. So it's like Magic the Gathering with baseball cards. Is that what it is? Uh, maybe not. There's not really you know. I don't feel like there was a whole lot of overlap. You know, like a Venn diagram of like people that were into trading card games like Magic in the '90s and like sp sports mm -hmm. fans. Probably yeah. just two circles. <laughs> like that that's yeah. the reason I can't talk about sports games hardly on my show is like most people that are really into video games aren't like hardcore into video games enough that they watch YouTube videos, I mean, just really yeah. aren't into sports, which I mean there's nothing wrong with that, but like, you know, I wouldn't mind talking more about that kind of stuff. But anyway, um yeah, I'd never seen this before, but um that might be kind of cool, I guess. Uh did you ever collect baseball cards? When you were a kid, I didn't. Oh. I didn't. You know, I I probably got a, a pack or two of baseball cards uh, because you know my mom or dad probably said, "Hey, you can get something for a couple bucks." You know, when we were in the checkout line. Oh, wait, hold on. I want to back up here because he says, um, "Oh, the the pull quote." Yeah, this is stock car racing on steroids. Yeah, it's funny. I see what he's saying. Like, did they not know what a demolition derby was? Um, yeah. You know, it's funny, like back, this is like, you know, years and well, like when I kind of first started my YouTube channel, I didn't really know what kind of videos I was going to make. Like, you know, I was just making like sort of semi random videos, you know, like, oh, I'm going to make a video about Doom for the PlayStation, for instance. And at one point I was going to make a video about the Destruction Derby series mm -hmm. and um, our county fair every year has a demolition derby and it's like. It's like the highlight of our county fair. Like like the tickets for the, like you have to pay for that separately. Well, mm -hmm. so our county fair is actually I think it's like the last county fair in the entire country that's like free. Like there's no admission. So, but if you uh, want to see something like a demolition derby, you have to buy tickets. And yeah. um and they sell out really fast cuz that that's like the the coolest that's the, event. That's the that's the thing everyone really actually goes for. Yeah. And I'd never been to a demolition derby before. And so I bought, you know, I, I got two tickets so my wife and I could go. And I brought my DSLR with me to record footage because I'm like, if I'm going to make a demolition derby, you know, retrospective video, I want to show some real demolition derby footage in it. But mm -hmm. um, obviously I never made the video, but I still have the I still have the footage. Were you able to use it? Uh, probably. No, not. I never used it. In any, it's probably not even really very good footage. You know, I mean, that was, yeah. I didn't really know too much about uh, how to record video back then. Um, there's an ad for, oh, here's that Quest for Fame game that they were talking about uh, earlier. When you play Quest for Fame, keeping up with the rock band Aerosmith is only part of the challenge. <laughs> oh. I guess. Your your favorite band, Aerosmith. That is not my favorite band. No. I mean, Aerosmith is fine. Don't I don't have like a I don't hate right him exactly. Like and I mean, I guess during this time they kind of had this big resurgence. Yeah. Or at least within the next couple of years of this issue. Oh so, yeah, when or like, maybe it was maybe it was like a year before this. I don't know. It was like yeah, because like I think it was when I was still in high school, right? When they had that one video that had Alicia Silverstone and Stephen Tyler's yeah, well, daughter, had, like, like a trilogy of of. Or or at least two videos. Yeah. So it was like, a, uh, and then they had that song that was on like the Armageddon. It was the, yeah. the sequel to it. 
Yeah. Was one of those two songs the one that was on the Armageddon soundtrack, or was that a different? Oh, that that was. I don't even after. know. All right, I don't even know. But yeah. Um. Anyway, the fact that they didn't get uh, utterly buried by grunge is some kind of weird miracle. Yep. Because I mean, yeah. Because I just remember like the crying video was like such a big at the time. Yeah. I mean, that, that just that album. I mean, I didn't buy it, but I had, uh, I remember a group of my friends all went to the mall and bought that same CD at the same time. Oh, I never. The only. I didn't think it either. The only Aerosmith CD I ever bought was um, Permanent Vacation. Mm, um, I, don't, I don't know which one that is. That's got uh, Ragdoll on it, and I think it's got Love in an Elevator on it. Oh okay. Um, there's there's four ninety nine from uh, Nova four twenty three saying that IBM sums up the nineteen nineties well. The first Aerosmith video with a leash yeah. of silver stone was crying. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Uh, and then Mojang Mojanga says Aerosmith made Run DMC. Um, we can agree to disagree uh, <laughs> on that one. I mean, I would say Aerosmith brought Run DMC to a different audience. That's for sure. But yeah. um, Run DMC was already a pretty that song came out in like 86, like run DMC was already a big deal in uh, 86. Um, over here is Geom cube, which um, I haven't Geom. played this one yet, but it just, to me, it looks like Blockout. Like if you ever play Blockout for the Genesis. I, which I is, haven't, it makes me think of like, uh, what it's is like it? Tetris like Tetris 3D. Weltris. Yeah. Weltris. I haven't played Weltris, but I mean, um, I've played Blockout on, uh, the gen it's like you know it's basically like tetris but in 3d although it's got some different pieces but you can see here so does this but uh technos game interesting yeah i always just think of uh river city ransom when i think of technos yeah yeah it was, it was the final uh what technos game this was the final yeah. technos game yeah it could be you just know that off the top of your head no, uh, that's what it's... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. But Joe, uh, same same name, different game is saying. Oh, well, bring the facts. That's a super dodgeball for Neo Geo was after. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, well, Loaded keeps going. Loaded has a lot of levels, apparently. Uh, and then what's <laughs> over here? Oh, Captain, Captain Quasar for the... Uh, 3DO. I don't know. 3D. I don't know. Seems like it might be kind of cool. It looks like he looks kind of like uh, Quark from the Ratchet and Clank games. Yeah. That's another, you know, a video that I almost made and did. Uh, I was going to make a whole video about the 3DO. But, oh, really? But not like the launch of the 3DO. Like there's, you know, some, I think some consoles don't need a launch video. You could just make a video about the console, you know, like. Right. I could see making a video about like the history of the Atari Jaguar, or the history of the 3DO, and so I actually started writing the history of the 3DO, and I just never, never did anything with it. You know, like I have like a half a written script just sitting on my computer. Uh, here's an ad for Tekken again with that same uh, layout. Save hundreds of dollars on fighting games by buying the right one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. If I, I think the first buy, buy the Tekken, right one. That's... I like it. And that the the cover that it shows there is different than the cover of the game, but that's on the back of the manual. Yeah, like the physical copy, I think, or maybe it's just what the manual looks like. I don't. I mean, I don't remember what the inside of the manual looks like, but um, it's a cool game. I feel like it's the kind of game where, like, um, you know, I didn't get a PlayStation at launch, but I knew a bunch of guys that got a PlayStation at launch, and it seems like Battle Arena Toshinden was the game that everybody, among the group of guys that I knew, that was like the game everybody grabbed was Toshinden. Yeah, and I feel like maybe I'm, maybe somebody wants to disagree with me, but I just kind of feel like as soon as Tekken came out, it would kind of make Toshinden seem kind of crappy. Well, Toshinden was. I mean, they're a little bit different. Saying that it's I mean, like, oh, it's so much better than Virtua Fighter. Well, I don't agree with that. Um, anyway. Um, I mean, they're different games, right? Because Toshinden's like a weapons based mm -hmm. game, but, uh, you know. Right. 
it just like you play it and it just seems real rough. You know, it's a very unpolished game. And I think that if you play Tekken, it would just make Tashinden seem even more uh average, I guess. Yeah. Is that is that is that Jack in, in Tekken? Is he the big guy is Jack? Yeah, isn't it? Yeah, I think Jack. And then he's like actually a robot and in was it the first one or the second one had like Jack two? And which which is the one that had had uh, we used to always joke that there's one one of the Jacks was called uh was prototype Jack, but in the game it, he was called P Jack. <laughs> like his his name under the uh under the life bar would say P Jack. Okay. Um <laughs> Joe says to Shinden has aged like soft cheese. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because my when I was in like high school or something, my my mom used to buy like she would buy brie cheese at the store, but like real cheap because we didn't have a lot of money. But so she would buy like cheap brie cheese and then stick it in like the you know you have like the meat and cheese drawer or whatever in your fridge. Yeah, she would stick it in there in the back because like she wanted to like age and it. No one would ever find it. Well, no, but she did it on purpose. Like she wanted she wanted to wait until like the cheese got like that whole ammonia. Like yeah. smell and taste to it, it's disgusting. Like I like brie cheese, but I want to eat it fresh. If it starts t- smelling like yeah. ammonia, I throw it in the garbage. Uh, there's an ad for so I haven't gotten to this game yet uh, on the PlayStation uh, Viewpoint, but I've played it. Uh, oh, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I would say extensively, might be overselling it, but uh, I've played it quite a bit on the the Neo Geo, and um, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think it's kind of a fun game. I mean. Yeah, how if you want to play a, a shooter that's a little bit different, then you know you could play the the PlayStation port. So I got to run to the bathroom really quick. Oh, okay, I, do you want me to do you want me water. to wait or? Um, you you can continue. All right, if I see uh, anything cool, yeah, I'll stop. If you, see, if you see something cool, yeah, I'll okay. be right back. Yeah. Or I can just talk to the chat for a while here. Uh, what do we got going on? Uh, it smells like ammonia. Um, high score 85. I love 8 bit sports games. I hope to keep hearing about sports on CGQ. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to stop talking about them, but, you know, I just, whenever I do, like, you know, if, you, if you've had a chance to watch yesterday's uh, Genesis video, I, I just, and I said it in the video, but I just feel like, okay, I'm going to talk about NHL 94. This is where a bunch of people are going to be like, ah, I don't want to watch uh, this episode uh, anymore. Um, yeah, I should have told him that, Joe. Like, you, you know, if you want to, if you want to pee, bring a Gatorade bottle and keep it under your desk, right? Um, if he needs to do a number two, though, that that's different. Because you could do it. You know, if it was just a number one, he could have done it on the sly, and we wouldn't have even known that he did it. Um. So yeah. Um. All right, what's what we got going on here next? Oh, see, Donkey Kong Country 2 is next, which I don't really even have any experience with. So um, I'd almost rather wait until he uh, comes back. Yeah, you wouldn't even... It's like they sell those... Um, what are those things called? It's like for truckers, if they don't want to have to pull over. I forgot what they're called. So that was a great episode on your way to work. Um, hopefully you didn't watch it while you were driving. Um, I can't believe Chris got away with killing scary in broad daylight. I'm oh, sorry. I don't, I don't know what that means. Uh, no, not a catheter. They have something that, I mean, you could use one of those, I guess, but that seems kind of uncomfortable, but uh, I used to see them in catalogs. It was this thing that, you know, you could just stick it down between your legs and, you know, do your business without having to pull over, I guess. Uh, okay, you're riding the bus. Good, good. Uh, that's what I was hoping. It was, you know, you're riding the bus or the train or something like that. Well, we'll just keep going. I don't, maybe, maybe, uh, maybe Corey's doing a number two or something. But um, yeah, so Donkey Kong Country 2, I don't even really have anything to say about it. Um, I haven't even played the first Donkey Kong Country that much, uh, if I'm being honest. As I've said before, I didn't have a Super Nintendo. Uh, you know, back in its heyday, I got a Super Nintendo in like 2004. So uh, I have played some of the first Donkey Kong Country, but um, I don't think I've played the second or third one, um, maybe even at all. 
Would be good for World of Warcraft players. That's true. Yes. Uh, and then over here is an ad for uh, Virtua Racing on uh, the Saturn. So I don't know how this differs. This even says Time Warner Interactive's VR Virtua Racing. So does this have any... I don't know how related this is. Well, you said you're going to the bathroom. What, do you have snacks now? What? Oh, good, you didn't hear me. You got a snack too? Yeah, I had to get some... Uh... You know, I haven't, I haven't even eaten dinner, you know, like I'm hungry too. Like we, <laughs> we make certain sacrifices for the people at home. You, you still got those gummies, huh? Oh, yeah. Man. If you have kids, you have a never-ending supply of gummies. I need some gummies. So I was just wondering, maybe you, you probably seem like you would know more about this. Um, mm -hmm. Is this, this this virtual racing, um, is it related to the Sega... Because it just oh, yeah, it yeah, says yeah. Time Warner Interactive's Virtua Racing on it, right? So like right. I'm kind of. So there is. I a, seem like there's a story here. This is you would really like. Yeah. Uh, there's like an hour long documentary on the making of this version of of a uh, uh, Virtua Racing. Yeah. Um, let me find the channel because it's it's very very good, and it seems like exactly like something the kind of uh, uh, video that you would like. Um, The channel is like it's like panda something. It's uh, pandemonium reviews. I'm gonna. Oh yeah, you, you uh, Joe said. He he just huh? he did Joe in the chat. He just typed that whole thing out. He said highly highly recommend that video. Pandemonium did a massive deep dive yep. on how Time Warner came into that deal. Yep. See, sometimes it's, you just gotta is. read the chat, you know, and then you don't have to Google things. Right. We it's, have it's chat. Like, it's an hour and five minutes, and it is. Really good. He like interviewed one of the developers on it and all this other stuff. It's yeah. pretty good. I should check that out. Oh, sorry. I th I see people what? are talking about it. Yes. Yeah. I uh, missed it. It is in the chat, but you know, but that's a good thing that I didn't see it in the chat and I still recommended it separately. Yeah. That just goes to show how good it is. Man, I would and love it. I would love to eat some in and out after this, but I don't think that's gonna happen. What? Somebody's saying I should get some In-N-Out after we're done here. Because In-N-Out's open until like 1 o'clock in the morning or something. But uh, Yeah. Yeah. I'd have to lie to my wife and say I was running to the drugstore or something. And then she'd want to know why I came mm -hmm. back smelling like beef fat. Jeffrey McSnacking, yeah. Jeffrey McGummies. Yeah. About. Um, so, I, you know, I was mentioning uh, while you were gone that I haven't really... Well, I potentially have not played Donkey Kong Country 2 at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I have very little it's the experience. Best one for sure. Is it? Oh, all right. Um, yeah. I've played the first one if a little gonna bit. You're going to play one? Yeah. That's the one worth playing. What if I'm not going to play uh, one? Hmm? So, what if I'm not going to play one? Then can I just skip it? Well, yeah, I mean, it depends. I mean, with me, I say it's okay, but but Try is, it's loves the DKC games. Like, he'll, he can. You get him started, and he'll be like talking all night about him. Yeah. Johnny says the trick is to always smell <clears throat> like beef fat. That's a good. That's a good <laughs> strategy. Uh, so again, now we're going to go into this big deep dive uh, strategy on Donkey Kong Country Two. Uh, here's another comic book uh, advertisement: DC versus Marvel Comics. That's interesting. Uh, oh, trading cards. Oh, it's a trading card game. Never mind. Yeah. I mean, this I is when trading card games were, cards, were like, blew up, right? I mean, no. Yeah, I, I never played any trading card, no. card stuff at all. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, Urban Strike. I, I was talking about, mm. um, uh, so that that's the third one. I couldn't remember when I made the video. I was trying to remember, like, which, which right. games came out. So then, mm -hmm. uh, sixteen-bit systems got Desert Strike, Jungle Strike, Urban Strike, and then thirty-two-bit right. got uh, Nuclear Soviet. Strike and Soviet Strike. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how much. I think I've I've played a little bit of Urban Strike. Um, I've, I've by yeah. far I've played the most Desert and Jungle. I think those are probably the best ones too. Yeah, Urban it just felt like. A lot, it felt a lot more rushed 
And now, oh. not only that, but now you have this like futuristic helicopters, like airplane type thing, like Warhawk. Like, like, war, yeah, like Warhawk. Yeah. Yeah. Got next, more Donkey Kong Country and uh, an ad for Total Eclipse Turbo. Yeah, this uh, was definitely the launch game. I rem- yeah, this was the game I already covered. Not yeah, not really very good. Uh, Midnight Cherry TV says the Urban Strike is better than Desert Ooh, Strike. That's a hot take. I'll have to check it out. Um, what do we got over here? Ooh, an ad for that, Tie that, Fighter. Wow. What is it? Tie Fighter. Oh, it's oh, funny because cool. I looked at it. I'm like, oh, it's an ad for a Star Wars game, and you get to look, and there's a little thing there. But I mean, Tie Fighter. Like, uh, so I didn't. I feel like that was way before. I feel like that came out way before this. No, I mean, because because X Wing came out in like '93. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't. I mean, people get mad at me or whatever, but um, I haven't played that much Tie Fighter. Like, if I if I made, I know I always say this, but if I made a list of my top five all time favorite games across any platform, X Wing would mm-hmm. definitely be on it. Um, really? Oh my god! When X Wing came out, I was like addicted to it. Um. <laughs> But, you know, the thing is, is like I, you know, I was pretty limited uh, as far as like what computer games I could play back then. It was a matter of what I could get off of friends. Right. Because we used to we used to pass right. uh, floppy disks around. Mm-hmm. Um, and unfortunately, what happened is that as more games started coming out on CD-ROM, like my friends at school that were in a computer game, uh, computer gaming, they, they got CD-ROM drives for their computers and I never did. And so if they got a game on CD, I wasn't going to be able to play it unless I went and, and purchased oh. a floppy copy. Um, yeah. And I, I didn't really buy computer games because I didn't really have I didn't really have money. Right. And so like when TIE Fighter came out, uh, I couldn't play it. Same thing with like when Wing Commander came out, like all my friends went nuts for Wing Commander. But it was on they had the CD version. And so I couldn't play it. So. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I got there's so much FMV in that game. There's no way that they would yeah. ever have a but um, a disc version. But I got X Wing. You know, when X Wing came out, it came out on floppy disk, and so I had that, and so I used to play the crap out of it. So like I, it's one of those games. Like I know I should play Tie Fighter in it because I know I would love it. But mm-hmm. at the same time, like I don't have any nostalgia for it, and so it's like, yeah, I could play Tie Fighter, or I could just play more X Wing. And then was the third one was X Wing versus Tie Fighter. Yeah, there was X Men right. versus Tie Fighter. I haven't played that one either. Which oh, and I, like I should point out though, this is uh, the Tie Fighter Collector CD ROM. So this is probably okay. like a re-release kind of thing. Like I'd have to look it up, but I would, if I had to guess, I would say that Tie Fighter probably came out in '94. And then, like I said, I'm pretty sure X Wing came out in '93. That sounds right, anyway. Uh, more Donkey Kong Country, but uh, here's an ad for uh, Rayman. So that's another game I'm looking forward uh, Rayman. To, to, yeah, Rayman. That uh, I'm looking forward to playing with the um, Jaguar, uh, whatever the hell, Game Drive. Um, yeah. I have, of course, played the PlayStation version because it was a launch, uh, mm-hmm. a launch title, but um, this is one of those Jaguar games that you're going to pay some money for if you want. And so I, I don't have... Uh, it's weird. I have actually. I do have a copy of that, even yeah. though, though I don't have a Jaguar. Well, At least you, I think it's a copy of that. Seems because like you should get a Jaguar then. I mean, it just has a label on it, or a like a print out label that just says Rayman on it. Maybe it's like a prototype. Uh, Is it heavy? I don't know. You should feel it. I, I mean, John Lineman gave it to me. He's like, I got a real a copy that has like a good label on it, and I had oh, this I version. I get. You it. can have this. All right, I get it. I assume that it's it's not it's not a prototype because if it was yeah he wouldn't have given it to you yeah no i know how that is you get friends that give you something that you have no use for but you have to keep it because they gave it to you like i had a buddy he gave me it's good they have it um, you know i think it's like a magnavox odyssey like control it's not it's like a pistol grip with like a twisty thing on top i don't know i forgot what system it's even for that a friend Mm -hmm. gave to me and like i don't even know what i'm supposed to do with it so i just have it in a box yeah you gave that to me. I was making a joke. I got that from you. Oh, really? Yeah. First time I ever met you, you gave me that. 
And I forgot what system it's even for because it's a system I don't have. So. Oh. Oh, oh, uh, I know what you're talking about now. I remember because I yeah. got two or I didn't have any any use for it. Right. Yeah. It, it was it was a channel F thing, wasn't yeah. it? I don't. Well, that's what control issues in the chat says. Channel F. Um, yeah. I was always sure. I was always I, I meant to open it and check it out, but it uses the it same fit in my, my bag or something like that. I couldn't. Some, I had no way to take. Well, it plus back. you were going to fly home. Do you really want something with a with a pistol? It looks like a real gun grip. Like I just. Right. Feel like someone's right. going to search your luggage if you have that. But um, uh, I wanted to open right. it and check it out because it has the same connector as an Atari Twenty Six Hundred, and so I wonder if you could turn it into mm -hmm. a Atari Twenty Six Hundred paddle by like rewiring it. Oh. But I don't know. Um. Anyway, whatever. I was just trying to. Make, I, I, to I totally, I totally forgot about that. Yeah. That was when we were in San Francisco, and I, yeah. I remember I did have that. And I said I can't, I can't fly with this thing. Yeah, you'll get on, you'll get on a list if you do that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Rayman. Um, Mission Deadly Skies. Is that the actual name of the game? I've never heard uh, of it. It's either that or called Barf Bags Not Included, which probably would be, <laughs> be a much better name. I mean, that would be a bad game, a bad name for the game. It wouldn't be. I'd play. I'd play a, a flight simulator called Yeah Barf Bags Not Included. That would have been like a good pre-order bonus for a game like that. Is like if it was like a barf, was a barf bag, bag that was that was branded, you know? Yeah. Uh, oh, I think I'm pretty sure I've used this ad on my show before. Uh, this is a Capcom uh, Super Nintendo ad. Long live the Super NES. Mm hmm. There's a. You got Breath of Fire. Uh, the first. No, that's Breath of Fire 2. Mega Man X. And uh, is that Final Fight Guy? Final Fight. Final it's Final Fight 3. Oh. You can't read it. It's a, I'm, I'm, I'm not smart. I don't know. I'm saying it says it in really small print next to the, next to the illustrations. Um. Joe says, do you remember that time that Kemco advertised a baseball game with a picture of massive butt cracks? <laughs> I, were, they all, were they all sitting on a bench or something and it was like a, a view from behind them, I assume? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Come on, you had to know that was coming. Uh, <laughs> it's literally right there. <laughs> and he was right. It was Kemco. He's, he's probably looking through, through it right now. Yeah, you, come on. You're you're cheating. But there you go. There's two big butt cracks, and he's right. It's Kemco. Uh, it, like, I'm dying. I had no idea. Amazing. You, yeah. Didn't even see, didn't see that coming. Virtual League Baseball for the Virtual Boy. Yeah. You know, just... Hmm. Finally, baseball Finally. without the chili dog farts. We've all been waiting for that. <laughs> uh, what's next here? High <laughs> Octane. Um, I don't think I've played this one yet. Uh, That's a either. bullfrog game. Yeah. Huh? When I always think of bullfrog, I think of Syndicate, which is another one of my all time. That or, one uh, might I, I not. I think of Populous. Oh, yeah, that's true. I, I mean, I don't really like Populous that much, but. Bull, like syndicates, maybe not top five, but maybe top ten. Mm. I love. I never game. played it. Oh my god, it's so much fun. It's it's yeah, really uh, like Bullfrog was was Peter, Peter Molyneux. Yeah, pa Molyneux. Yeah. Uh, next, oh, Doom Troopers. It's a pretty cool ad. Like I knew guys in high school that could draw like this. You know, I never could. What are you doing over there? So I was just typing something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Breath <laughs> of Fire Two. Like, if you're getting bored, just let me know. No, no, I'm not. I it's know, just, I'm just uh, Charles is asking me a question really quick. I'm just giving you a hard time. Uh, Breath of Fire Two. Um, I guess probably strategy section. Coming. Yeah. Wonder if they talk about the or just maybe 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 it's a better translation. I was gonna say yeah. Game. You you probably need this. 
Uh, oh yeah, here you go. Here's they, a they, here's a dedicated ad for Final Fight Three. Oh. have I played that Final one's? That's, that's kind of pricey these days, and it has a really interesting two player mode yeah. where the computer just plays the second player. Oh, like you can play two player like cooperative with the computer. Yeah, that's kind of cool. It is. I mean, assuming that it works well. Yeah. Um. Yeah, more Breath of Fire two. Uh, what system? Aliens. I can't even see what system uh, this is for. It looks like it's probably a PC game. Yeah, if I had to guess, that's what I would say. I don't, it doesn't see anywhere, but yeah, the, I mean, those graphics look too nice to be uh, home console. Yeah. Uh, what is this? You gonna play Aliens versus Predator on that uh, Jaguar? I think drive? I should because I've never played uh, Alien versus Predator. That was because it's probably a, another the killer one, app on the system for the longest time. They were always saying that that was the game yeah. to have. And that was, I mean, that's been an expensive uh, Jaguar game for a really long time. Really? Yeah. Like for as long as I can remember, that was a game where if you wanted it for the Jaguar, you were gonna pay some money for it. Uh, oh, Offworld Interceptor Extreme. Um, so I don't, part of me doesn't want to say this because like, I don't want to spoil my video, but I mean, not that many people are watching this live stream, so it's probably okay. But um, So I have not played uh, the 3DO version of just mm -hmm. Offworld Interceptor. So I don't know if that does it too. But uh, you remember that show, uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000? Yeah. So... So Offworld Interceptor Extreme has all these full motion video cutscenes, and as is sort of like par for the course for full motion video cutscenes, uh, they're pretty cheesy. Like the you know it's bad acting right. and bad writing and bad you know low budget whatever. So, but this like I don't know if you can you can kind of see. Yeah, I, I can. I know what you're talking about because I remember you, this being. You the see thing. the outlines of the people. So like. They're like the game is basically making fun of itself because they probably shot all this stuff and realized that it was so bad that, yeah. But so I don't, I don't know if the 3DO version has that or if they added it for the PlayStation version or something, but um, right. Um, it's actually pretty funny though. Like, I, I, I took a clip out of you know, because I talked about that in the video and I mm -hmm. took because I already finished this section too, but I took a clip out of there because, like, uh, one of the comments that one of the little guys makes like really made me laugh my butt off. So I'm yeah, saying it's pretty well it. done. So, uh, Joe's saying is, is Doug Benson and Brian Posen. Oh, Brian Posen. Well, wow, that's cool. Posen. That's it. Yeah. I think the dude's dunking on the cutscenes in that game. That's, I didn't know that. That's huh. pretty cool. Wow. Uh, and he says the 3DO has it too. So yeah, you're probably right though. I bet they made it and realized like how cheesy it was and was like, okay, I know how to fix this. And it's, that's actually kind of ingenious. You have to give them some credit for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The game's not really very good. I don't, I mean, it's not, it's not horrible. You, you wouldn't, you definitely wouldn't want to own it, but I don't know. Maybe if you, maybe if you rented it, you wouldn't completely hate it. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, oh, this is cool. Here's an ad for uh, Mega Man X3. Eh, I mean, any like Mega Man X2 and X3 just kind of blah to me. Yeah. I love X1. Yeah. X1 might be my second favorite Mega Man game, period. What's your first favorite? After the, uh, the first Mega Man, the probably. Mega Man 1 is your favorite Mega Man. Believe it or not, oh. I know it's like kind of a weird choice. Uh, but I, I love that first one and I hmm. have played through it so many times and, uh, yeah, I mean, I love, love X1 though so much too. Yeah. Like really just like Mega Man 1, 2 and X1 are like my yeah. top three for sure. Uh, but I do like X4, like once, once they had the yeah. power, the CD technology, it yeah. got a lot better. That was, I had, I bought that game. Um, which one X4? Because mm -hmm. yeah, I think that game the... that game came out like sort of around the time that I got my PlayStation, and I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I didn't have a Super Nintendo, right? So I didn't play any of the Super Nintendo Mega Man games. But I mean, I grew up with an NES, so you know, 
for me that just the name Mega Man, you know, had a lot yeah. of, you know. It's a safe choice. Yeah. Yeah. You in fact, I, 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 I told that story before, but, um, you know, I had this friend named Chris who uh, he bought, I don't remember exactly when, but he bought a, a Nintendo 64. Um, like he got, you know, birthday money or Christmas money or something. And he went and bought mm-hmm. uh, an N64. And I remember the two games he got were Super Mario 64 and Shadows of the Empire. So I don't know when Shadows of the Empire came out, but he, he bought his N64 sometime after that. And, um, I remember like not, I mean, I, I don't want to turn this into some, you know, bagging on, I mean, I like the N64 just fine now, but I had a pretty strong negative reaction to it when yeah. I played it over at Chris's house. And then like, you know, sometime after that, I got my PlayStation and, uh, he came over to my house one night after I had gotten Mega Man X4. And I remember he kept playing it for so long that I just like went to bed. And I think he ended up like crashing on my couch just because like I went to bed and he was still playing games. And I remember the last day or the next day, rather, he was telling me uh, like Mega Man X4 made him realize that like he wished he'd gotten a PlayStation instead of a Nintendo 64. (laughs) Even though, I mean, you know, he really liked Mario 64, right? So it's not like he had like buyer's remorse because of his N64, but... Mm. Did you like any N64 games? Is what, um, uh, I mean, I think... That cigarette juice man's asking. Oh, um, back then? Um, yeah. Yeah, like, so when I when I went off to college, like, my neighbors next door in the apartment next door had an N64, and I would mm-hmm. go over there and watch. They would play, like, NFL Blitz together. Like, you know, the two roommates would play that against each other. Or they had like Mario Tennis. And I remember watching them play Mario Tennis made me actually really want to get an N64 because that Mario Tennis is totally the kind of game that my wife would play with me. Uh, <laughs> I mean, she wasn't my wife yet. She was my girlfriend, but we were we were together. But um, Right. Um, oh, yeah, Joe's saying if the answer is no, we know Chris isn't a wrestling fan. I'm actually not a wrestling fan, but. Um, and I, I don't think I've played any of the wrestling games on the N64, but, um, yeah, I haven't really played any of them actually seriously, yeah. but I do remember when I worked at electronics boutique, a lot of when, whenever a new N64 wrestling game came out, it was, yeah. it was a major event. Yeah. I mean, those are very yeah. beloved games, but I haven't finished listening yeah. to it yet, but, um, cause it's like four hours long, but I'm working my way through the latest retro game squad, uh, mm-hmm. podcast which is all about the N64 and uh, I don't oh, okay. remember which game, but they did cover one wrestling game, and it made me want to check it out for sure. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, next we're getting we're getting semi close to the end. We're on page one ninety two out of about two twenty five. So, okay. Um, this is kind of interesting. Just it's a, a you know it's an anime ad, but yeah. it's I didn't realize that Pioneer like was was themselves publishing uh anime oh, yeah. laser discs. Yeah. So I mean I sure. know that there were a lot of I know a lot of anime was released on laser discs, but I didn't know that Pioneer but that makes sense because I mean Pioneer's a Japanese company, so mm-hmm. um I do have a, a It was like that at, with D V D as well early on. They ported a lot of their laser yeah. discs over to D V D. I actually decided recently I'm I'm getting rid of all my laser disc movies. Oh really? Well, it's just like there's not really any way to make a laser disc look good on a HD TV, and so I have all these movies on laser disc where there's nothing special about the laser disc version. So like, why do I have it? Like, there's taking up space. Yeah. Because I also have a pretty good collection of like laser, like music laser discs, where it's like, mm-hmm. you know, collections of music videos or like concerts, and to oh, me that. Awesome that's kind of more of a reason. Like I have a Nirvana concert on Laserdisc. Like that's more of really? a reason to keep a Laserdisc player because yeah. Laserdiscs actually have very, very good audio. And I don't mm-hmm. care as much about the video because maybe you even put it on and you don't even watch it. You're just listening to it. So, so I'm going to hang on to all of those, but all the, all the movies with, I'm going to keep a few, but most of them are going to go. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, that keeps going. Uh, here is a Techno, a Tecmo Super Bowl three, the final edition. Um, the final edition. Was it actually the final edition though? I don't. Is that right? I don't. I don't know. I have no hmm. idea. Was there a four? I mean, it's interesting that they hadn't even started using years. Yeah. Yeah. I don't. The, the Tecmo Bowl games For is suggested it's a, retail price of sixty nine ninety nine. Wow. Dang. Or less. It says or less. Um, Tech Mobile is like, a, to me, it's just like an interesting franchise because like it was like the de facto football game on the NES. Oh, yeah. But then like during the 16-bit era, like I don't even know anybody who had one of the games, right? Because like once like Madden came out and I know that it's not, you know, they fill a different, you know, need or whatever. But like I didn't know anybody that had a Tecmo Super Bowl game. Like any of them, because if you wanted to play a football game on like the Genesis, there were just other things right. that you were going to get instead. Yeah. So I'm yeah. surprised they even released three of them. I mean, three was the only one that came after probably Super Bowl, which was on the NES. Um, I mean, Unless... I could be wrong, but I don't think so. I think there were multiple. This is Tecmo. Oh. Because then there were, I don't know. <laughs> I think there was more than one on the 16 bit. Um, Cause there was tech mobile, super tech mobile, and then Tecmo super bowl was not the same as super tech mobile. I don't know. I'm not going to, I'm not going to make people wait while I Google it, but. Um, oh, what's this? What's the aura interactor. That seems like something you would know things. Oh, about. It, that's like a, it's like a vest. Really? It has, it's like a, yeah. I mean, it's essentially like like a bass uh, um, speaker in it. Oh. So like a you know you you feel the hits. Oh, so it wasn't like a controller or something. It just kind of so it's almost kind of like early force feedback kind of thing. Yeah, but it's it's it was not good. Oh, that's too bad. It's like a vest. I mean, whatever. If you want to wear this stupid thing when you play games every time. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, this guy in the chat. Well, I shouldn't say guy. I don't know. The person in the chat, A. Yuki, says, I had that thing. It really sucks. It hurt my back. <laughs> and then Joe says, it's it, a it, subwoofer not you strapped to your torso. Wow. <laughs> uh, hey, here's a here's an ad for uh, the Jaguar. The uh, For $149.99? Can you spot the Jaguar. The, can you spot the elephant in this picture? If so, you're probably smart enough to figure out that paying 149 for a 64-bit Jaguar makes more sense than paying over 300 for a 32-bit system. Just do the math, yeah. Corey. I will. Yeah, I've already done it. Yeah. I mean, some of the games and, are showing on here. Do look, they do look good in the screenshot they're showing, to be fair. And they got Rayman. That I mean, even Pitfall of Mine is, Adventure is, looks is good that, right Is now. there Trevor McFur in any of those? Thank God, no. There's no... I, I don't think... There exists a screenshot of Trevor McFur that would make it look better than it is. You know, like <laughs> yeah. the game just looks like crap while you're playing it and has no music. What if it said like, you know, Trevor McFur is like game does not include music. Yeah. Like wh who, whoever even heard of that? What game doesn't include like you have to play an Atari game to go back to when games didn't have music. It, yeah, they needed to have it there for day one to release it here's the third mention of captain quasar Jeez. oh this is a whole strategy deep dive of captain quasar wasn't that exciting such a such a brilliant character design on him too yeah power surge expansion set so yet another juggernaut yet another trading card game like i said this is a time when like you know i think magic came I, out I, I have and was popular and then you know the pokemon game came out i actually don't, I don't even know when pokemon came out as a trading card game but I just remember, like, just from back in the day, because I played Magic the Gathering, that all these Me Too trading guard games came out. Right. Because of it. Uh, I do I do recognize here. the name Overpower, though. Yeah. Did you know that when you right. buy NBA Jam Tournament Edition at Toys R Us, it's a steal? I bet you didn't know that. Stolen. Yeah. Uh, oh, you get 10. They have a 10. Oh, but it's a rebate. Mail oh, rebate. It was only thirty nine ninety nine at release, though. That's already pretty good. Is that yeah. for for any of them? 
I think it's, it's I think I bet it's just for tournament tournament edition. Or you mean for no, the I, any version like the, Yeah, see this doesn't include the PlayStation version. I see. Although to be honest, I mean for it to be that cheap and be on a cartridge actually is maybe even Yeah, more. I mean the thirty two X version is, is supposed to be really good. Yeah, what it says here it applies to the thirty two X version. Yeah, I mean getting that for thirty bucks is a pretty good deal. Yeah. Um what do we got over here? Emmett Smith football? Never played it. Jeez, I never played it. What about well, Mark? Didn't you say game. this was one of your hidden gems games on the Super Nintendo? Mark Davis, oh, the fishing they... master? <laughs> <laughs> Look at how like, excited he is. Yeah. Oh, no. he, he is the fishing master. It's a Natsumi oh, Mark game. Mark Davis. Not, not Sume, Natsumi. I don't know how you say it. I wonder what Mark Davis is up to these days. Is he still the fishing master or has he had to, you know, pass on the title? He looks like the kind of guy that, that you know, I'm not going to say it. <laughs> um, oh, Mark Davis. Yeah. Okay. Uh, center like, ring guy. boxing for the Sega Saturn. That guy skipped leg day. <laughs> Bird legs. <laughs> For that torso, yeah. too. Yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, oh, here you go. Uh, Super Star Wars Return of the Jedi. Oh, the, interesting. For the Game Gear and Game Boy. I had forgotten that they came out for the system for for the uh, Game Boy and Game Gear, and I I've never checked them out because I wonder if they what they do to even deserve the the Super moniker on there if they're even close to the Super Nintendo version in, in any way. I don't know. You don't think, I mean, I, I guess I just would have, just purely based on looking at that, I just would assume that they're dumbed down versions of the Super Nintendo game. Yeah. I mean, I would assume so as well, but it's just, yeah. just it's it's weird for those games to be backported, I guess, like that. See, I always hated like, the, you know, when they did stuff like this though, because this is a, this is a regular Game Boy game, but they show it in color because it's probably Super Game Boy footage because this right. is before the game boy color came out yeah well, you can see the super game boy logo right on the box there oh i'm sorry you're correct um but it just seems kind of disingenuous because it's like oh yeah you can have the game look like this but not if you play it on a game boy right uh what do we got here nfl quarterback club 96 i never played any of the quarterback club games i've seen the Genesis version of that a lot at a lot of different thrift stores over the yeah, years. I could imagine that. I mean, I think actually I'm pretty sure. I think uh when I got my original um EverDrive, which mm -hmm. was like gosh That like, was the first game you played? No. Uh like ten or ten or twelve years ago. Like when I I'm saying when the original EverDrive came out, you know, like and it was right. just it was just called the EverDrive because it was the only one. Um, mm -hmm. you, when you, you'd buy it from Igor, uh, what? From Igor. Oh, yeah, right. The guy that makes Sorry, Everdrive. It, it, yeah, yeah. It, it took me a second to, um, like it, there was no like third party sellers back then selling them. Like you had to buy them from, from him, but he would do, he would do like group buys. Right. right? So I got in on a, on a group buy at the Atari age forums, but you didn't get a shell or anything. He would just send you the PCB. And so you had to you had to supply the shell. Oh. And okay. I remember uh NFL quarterback club for the Genesis was what I used as a donor shell. And so you had to get it you had to get a shell, open it up, take the PCB out and throw it out, and then, you know, if you wanted to, take the label off. And then I remember yeah. you had to drill a hole in the shell for the reset button for Sega Master System games. <laughs> so it was it was a quarterback quarterback club that you did that with. Yeah. Yeah. Cuz I think I ended up Don't going to like about a, that. I ended up going to like a thrift store and just finding like whatever Genesis cartridge I could that I felt okay. You know cuz I mean You'd go to the thrift stores and you'd be tripping over copies of like Sonic the Hedgehog 2, right? But like I yeah. would never use a game like that 
No, no, you know, no, no. even though it's common, like that's a good game, and so you don't destroy that. But I mean, who cares about quarterback club? Yeah, nobody's gonna gonna care about that. I mean, those are the kind of games that people use as for like repros. Yeah, you know? yeah. Hey, speaking of that, did you get that Toa Plan collection? Did you buy that or no? Or do they send uh, you? I did. Didn't. They send you. I've one? heard a lot of good stuff about it. Yeah. And uh, I heard it's it's very well made. I think the the PCBs were designed by uh, Renee from DB Electronics, so you know that they're. they're I thought well we weren't designed. supposed to tell people that. I thought that was supposed to be a secret. Um. I don't know why, but somebody told me point, that and was like, "Oh, I don't think... tell anybody." Oh. Well, I so, I don't know why they wouldn't. Everybody, want to never mind that, that he said that. So I don't. I didn't get the collection because <laughs> I already had uh, Truxton and. As you yeah. know, I have not one but two copies of Fire Shark, because remember mm-hmm. I got the five dollar Japanese copy yeah. at the at the thing. So the only other American game that I didn't have uh, was Hellfire here. So I just bought this. Um, this is what I did with some of my uh, uh, mixtape revenue was by right. uh, by Hellfire. So um, I, I don't have Zero Wing, but. Uh, I, so I don't know why this is, but uh, you know there were there were six Toa Plan shooters released on the Genesis and Mega Drive. I don't know why that the the collection only has four of them, because um, there was Twin Twin Hawk and Twin Cobra, which oh, was right. Q, one of them's Cute Yoku Tiger and the other one's Dyson Poo. Well, the, but those are good games Twin too. Cobra so. was like I think it was I think Twin Cobra was uh, Sega published. Here. Um, because it, it's, yeah, it's a black it grid, yep. a black grid box, yeah. But so US. you think that they like, but I mean, Toa Plan didn't publish any of their own games, so I mean, right. But I wonder if there was like a different deal, or could be. Like that. I don't know, it would have been cooler because if they released may, maybe games. it's just the ones that the companies are not around because I guess that's like with Seismic, yeah. Uh, uh, what well, Fire Shark was, um, like DreamWorks or something like that, DreamWorks, yeah. And uh, Zero Wing never came out in the U.S., I don't think. No, it did not. But, I mean, Truxton was published by Sega. That's true. That's true. Anyway, nobody cares, right? Know. But um, <laughs> but that is weird that they wouldn't put the rest of them in there. Maybe yeah. they just couldn't do it for some reason. But now, now I kind of want to get those games, too. Because um, it's you funny. Should. I was looking like Twin Cobra is not an expensive game on the Genesis, which I think is weird. Mm-hmm. Like what Truxton is super expensive. Hellfire is over a hundred dollars. Like, but somehow twin Cobra yeah. is cheap. Like, I don't really, I don't know how much fire shark is. Cause I got my copy of way a long time ago, <laughs> not the $5, but I mean my American copy I bought like a long right, time right. ago for like, you know, I think I might have paid 30 bucks for it. Um, Am I yawning? Yeah, I'm probably yawning. I'm tired and I'm yeah, I mean, and I'm hungry. I've I've been I've been yawning a little bit too much because I was didn't sleep very well last night. Yeah. Um. All right. What's the greatest football game of all time? It's not quarterback club. Uh, quarterback a club ninety. It's not quarterback back club ninety six. It's probably gonna be a Madden. It's Madden ninety two. Madden ninety six. Oh well. Is that one good? I forgot. Oh, no, there was another good years. Madden. It's like Madden had a couple of bad games, and then I, I forgot which one was considered good. Like it was like maybe ninety seven or something. Ninety seven is one of those. You can find it on the on the Saturn, and I have it. You can find the Saturn version. Yeah, it's like it was super Saturn super version. common. I was able to find it like brand new, like brand new copy. But that one's kind of fun because it's on the Saturn, but it's still sprite based. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's probably it was before uh, it went down the tubes with all the like going fully polygonal or polygonal or however you say it. Yeah. Um, 90, 96 on the Genesis was canceled. Joe's asking which one, but yeah, it was Madden. It was supposed to be Madden 96, which apparently was basically finished. Which is that one right there. So that was canceled. So that never came out? No, no, no. For the PlayStation. This is oh, the Genesis okay. version they're showing. <laughs> is, is John is John Mann still alive? Like I don't know. Yes, he's still alive, but he's very very old. He doesn't. I saw I saw a picture of him, like a recent they picture. Still, like re- 
he's not looking so good. So which oh, really? I'm not saying that to be funny. It's just I worry. Like I don't think I'm I'm gonna be upset when Madden passes away. Yeah. Um. All right. Here we go. This is kind of cool. Here's this is an arcade uh, strategy guide for uh, mm-hmm. Ultimate Mortal Kombat Three, which I know you don't like. You said, but 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 Ultimate like went a long way to uh, fixing Re- a lot of stuff rectified the problems. Problem with. Well, it just it like doubled the amount of characters. The amount of stuff that they they added for Ultimate. Yeah. Like it truly deserved the title of being Ultimate. Well, that's good. Um. And then here's another game I haven't gotten to yet, uh, covering it, you know, for that episode, uh, Criticom. So I don't have anything yeah. to say about it That's at all. Th- the screenshots from, look uh, neat, but that means from nothing. From Vic Tokai. Yeah. Um, oh, this is pretty cool. There's an ad for the Sega channel. Ah, that is really cool. Yeah. Hey, fat boy, this year, keep the socks and give me Sega Channel or Rudolph Burgers? Hit the grill. Yep. Get me. Oh, he's threatening to murder Rudolph if he doesn't get yeah. Sega Channel. Hmm. So the fat boy is Santa. Right, yes. Um. Yeah, I, you know, I had a Genesis, and so I, I don't think I knew Sega Channel existed, but... That would have been really cool uh, to have. I don't really understand. It was, it was cool to have. It was it was very neat. I mean, that's you had a it? defining moment for me. I I did. Yeah, oh. I had it for like three months. But the def, the defining thing for me was playing Mega Man: The Wily Wars on it. Yeah. Um. Did you ever get to play? Like, I mean, I don't know how long you had it. Did you get to play Alien Soldier on it, or? Uh, I may have tried it. But I don't, I don't think that I, I if I, I did play it, I, I don't think I played it. I forgot I where it might have been on Sega Retro. Like somewhere I found like a partial schedule of like what games came out on the Sega channel when like were available oh, really? at certain times. I should look at that. Because from what I said, it se- from what I saw rather, it seemed like Alien Soldier didn't come out on the Sega channel until like 1997. But I read okay. that and was like, I don't, I mean, I don't know if I believe that or not. That, that. Yeah. But it didn't come out until that late. Because, again, it was not... It was like an incomplete listing. Two-on-two uh, two, uh, open ice challenge. I was going all in with the sports games in the back. Yeah. Like half of this. Yeah. Two-on-two, um, two, that sounds like... It's a midway, so that's got to be like NBA yeah, GM it, hockey. It is, yeah. It's like NBA GM on ice. Fully licensed, and it's it? kind of it's kind of cool to read. I mean, maybe you're not a hockey fan, but you know, uh, a lot of big names from the '90s um, mm-hmm. on this list of players. That was like for me, the '90s was the golden age of of hockey. Like I, I still watch hockey some now, but um, mm-hmm. it's just not the same. Um, oh, yeah, I don't. So, yeah, this ad for Wipeout, I'm pretty sure I used this because I already finished the Wipeout segment too. But this yeah. I, this ad, it just seems like they just seem like a couple of like heroin addicts or something, like ODing. <laughs> like, like, the, like the way she's sitting there with this yeah. blank look on her face and the, and the blood coming out of her nose reminds me of um, like when, when – All fiction. Exactly, yeah, when Mia Wallace ODs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean that's exactly what I what I think of when I see her too. Yeah, Pulp Fiction was one of those movies. Like some of my favorite movies are the movies that I watched without knowing anything at all about them. Yeah, and I had mm-hmm. never even heard of Pulp Fiction, but a friend of mine, like like there was this I've mentioned them on the show before, but like there were these twins that I went to mm-hmm. school with that were like probably the richest kids in school. Like, I mean, where I grew up, rich was like a relative term. It's not like I grew up in L.A. with like, you know, billionaires. But like, you know, right. these kids, like their parents were like developers in the area. And so, I mean, they were like millionaires, you know. But like they were they were like video game nerds. So they hung out with us at school because like, you know, all the money they had couldn't buy cool, you know. Like nobody thought <laughs> yeah. they were cool because they were all video game. They were both video game nerds. So they hung out with us. And... um Anyway, like one time I was riding around in the car with with one of them and he's like, oh, hey, let's go to the movies. And I was like, all right, well, whatever. Like 
I didn't have any money. I'm like, I don't have any money. He's like, oh, don't worry about it. He's like, let's go. We're going to go watch this movie, Pulp Fiction. And I was like, I don't even know. Like, I'd never heard of it. But he's like, I'll, I'll pay for your ticket. Let's go watch Pulp Fiction. I'm like, oh, all right. And that's how I saw Pulp Fiction. And so it just, like, blew my mind. It, like, it, yeah, blew your mind. Because, like, I, I mean, I didn't know who Quentin Tarantino was. Like, I had never seen or heard oh. of Reservoir Dogs or... or Me either. Uh, and um, and that's just, like... Some of my favorite movies are like that, where I just I didn't I knew nothing whatsoever about the movie and just watched it and, and loved mm-hmm. it. But yeah. Anyway, all that is to say is that these are like a couple of heroin addicts that are getting ready to go pawn their PlayStation. Yeah, that came out in ninety. Did it come out in ninety four, ninety five? Full fiction. Yeah. Something like that. I mean, because I, I don't think I really hung out with that guy anymore after high school. So. Yeah. Just oh, and I didn't because they, um, both brothers went off to college on the East Coast. So, uh, <laughs> Solar Eclipse for the Saturn. I don't think I've ever played that one. Is that the sequel to Total Eclipse? It could be. I don't know. I'm pretty sure that it is. Oh yeah. I don't know. Yeah. What's oh, there's five dollars from Vincent De Bellis. Oh, I'm said, sorry. Uh, be nice to the nerds. You'll end up working for one. Thanks for the stream. Have a great night. Oh, well, Thank thanks, you. man. Appreciate it. I mean, I, I was one of the nerds, and in, in, I'm not making fun of those guys. I was one of those guys. I was I was the poor version of them, though. That's the thing. Like, you know, they were, like, all nerdy and stuff, but, like, when they turned 16, like, they both got brand new cars, you know? <laughs> so, um. Internet Underground, your guide to cyberspace. Pick up the December issue and satisfy your need to know. Confessions of a Netscape hacker and problems of net security. Huh. I used to I used to pick up. Um, there was this. They still. They, it's still in print. There's this like magazine called uh, Twenty Six Hundred, the Hacker Quarterly, or something like that. I used mm-hmm. to buy that and read it, even though I didn't understand half of what was in there. But it's funny because I still. You know, I go to the magazine store once or twice a month because I pick up my copies of uh, PC Gamer and Retro Gamer, and they still print that. But it sounds similar to this. Uh, do you want to see read that comment from a uh, forearm tattoo dude? Oh, oh, yeah. Sorry. You know, hey, first of all, sorry, uh, forearm tattoo dude. I got your whoops. Um, I got your postcard. I, I need to send you one back. So I, I, I still have it. Well, I have all of them, but. Um, Sorry, I forgot to do that. Um, but uh, yeah, hey Taylor, uh, how's it going? Uh, you, <laughs> be nice to forearm tattoo dude. Make you know, yeah. make him his favorite dinner tomorrow. That's sexist. I didn't mean that. Um, I'm tired. <laughs> anyway, hi Taylor, have a good night. Um, thank you, uh, Corey, for pointing that out. Uh, yeah. Oh, here's a, we have a, a strategy section for uh, two one two open ice challenge. Is there? I wonder if there's any console versions of that. I could I swear this came out on the PlayStation. I wouldn't bet my life on it, but I'm I'm pretty sure that it did. Uh, Look at that alternate gaming rig. Yep, yeah, Pandemonium uh, Incorporated. Ultimate yep. Ultimate Gaming Rig apparently included a Jaguar and a Virtual Boy and a 3DO, a Gold Star 3DO though. I don't. I've never had a Gold Star 3DO. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I don't know how many people realize this, but um, oh, Farm Tattoo Dude says I'm the cook. Yeah, me too. <laughs> um, w- w- I don't know what I don't know if my views at the time were justified or not. But when I was a, when I was like a, back in these days. I always had kind of a negative opinion of Gold Star. Like I always felt like Gold Star Electronics. Like if you had a, like a Gold Star VCR, yeah, it was like mm-hmm. kind of on the low end, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, what if you had a Gold Star 3DO? Well, then you're on like the low end of the low end, right? <laughs> um, oh yeah, Joe looked it up. So yeah, I said uh, arcade PS1 and Windows. So mm-hmm. yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Uh, what Joe said. Is that now uh, Gold Gold Star is just LG, like the G in LG stands for Gold Star, and so like and now oh, L- really? LG is a pretty popular brand, right? I mean, like my washer and dryer yeah, yeah, yeah. LG. Um, sadly, LG just announced they're not going to make cell phones anymore, which sucks because I think that the 
uh, LG V series Android phones are like awesome, awesome phones. So it's too bad about that. But, hmm. um, but yeah, L, like they said, uh, Urkel there says LG just stands for lucky gold star. I did not know that. Yeah. That's, well, pretty see, that's why so, I have so you on means... is you, you learned something today. Yeah. Well, do you think that they make it like they have improved since back then or they were always pretty decent because they're good now. LG is good. I trust yeah. them. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think my grandparents had a gold star um, VCR mm-hmm. and I, I, maybe it was just the way it looked. It just seemed like it was kind of cheap or something, but yeah. Um, yeah. Yuki says you're still using a V20. Yeah, I have a, um, I don't use it as a phone, but I have an LG V35 and I have it here in the basement uh, just purely for uh, streaming, um, streaming music just because of its superior uh, DAC chip. So, like, I have it hooked up to my um, stereo down here. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, Brain Dead 13. Ah. I haven't played. That came out for a lot of things. PC CD-ROM, Mac CD-ROM, MPEG. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Sega CD, 3DO, Sega Saturn, Sony PlayStation. So... I I'd have to go double it. check. I don't know if that's I on do my have, list. I think I have that on my X station, though. I've never played it. Yeah. Oh, you have an X station? I do. Yeah. How's that? Us? Awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Combine, like, with that, yeah. the PS1 Digital, yeah. and now the uh, the the Mem Card Pro. Mm-hmm. Like, like, PS1 is basically, like, there's nowhere yeah. else for it to go. You, you, have a, you have a PS1 Digital mod, too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, is that how I, is that like better than like just plugging your PlayStation into an upscaler? Like I don't get it. Well, it's a pure digital signal directly from the uh, from the uh, the chip. I mean, so I, I get no... that, but I'm saying like, what's that? I said I get that, but I'm saying like, does it? I mean, does it look that much better? Like, I think it looks, you know, it's razor sharp. Yeah, yeah, it's it's pretty impressive. I like that with those mods, you can uh, output HDMI to your capture card and play on a CRT Mm -hmm. at the same time. You don't lose one or the other. Oh, you can still use the... I didn't know that. Yeah. So you can still use the analog output. Oh. I mean, that's what I I do anyway. Like, I have my... Because I'm using HD retrovision cables now. Mm -hmm. So I have that, you know... My setup down here is like whatever console I have is plugged into my PVM because I have a P right. like this PVM can do component. And then I have just the output of that going into whatever upscaler I may or may not have. Right. I mean, but I'm, all, my point is, is just like for but... what for what a, you know, a PS1 digital mod costs. It's like for me, like would it would it actually be worth getting something like that? Maybe not. I mean, it, it could, but I, I mean, I think it's worth it. Yeah. But I, I mean, if you're completely happy with what you're doing now, I wouldn't change it. Yeah. Oh, so Nuke Inner Network. So this. Yeah. What is that? This is kind of interesting. Uh, Frank Cifaldi, Frank Cifaldi kind of told me a little bit about it. Where this was a website that was going to be kind of ahead of its time, like a gaming website before there was like gaming websites. Yeah. And uh, that was what Nuke was going to be. Hmm. And, uh, I mean, he could explain it a lot more. Uh, but it, essentially, it's like, it's like way ahead of its time. Yeah. I wonder what ever happened to it. Uh, I don't know. But, I mean, Nuke.com, that's a pretty good URL, too. Oh, for sure. I wonder what Nuke.com is now. I don't know. I will look right now. Okay. Please do. What kind of keyboard you got? Uh, it redirects you to giantbomb.com. Oh, I bet. Interesting. Yeah. That's what I was I kind of get. I was wondering if, like, at some point this got bought out by somebody else. Mm hmm. But how old is Giant, so Giant Bomb? Bomb? I mean, I know it's not, old, but I not, know, it doesn't Giant, but no, seem not like it's even that old. From them. I mean, yeah. no, I'm a, I want to say Giant Bomb's like, like maybe. 15 years old at this point. Mm-hmm. 
So, I mean, I think they probably just had to... They, they probably bought it, just bought the URL and redirected yeah. it. Yeah. Well, it looks neat anyway. Uh, next, what we got? Um, marketplace ads, uh, game stuff. I never heard of that one. Monterey Park, California. Uh, the ubiquitous BRE software. Yeah. Uh, ad. That's where I bought my Jaguar. Yeah, BRE. Mm -hmm. A few years later than this, but I got my ja I got a Jaguar brand new in the box from BRE for twenty five bucks. Holy cow! I mean, I've told that story brand, like brand, I've told that story new. like ten times. But I walked into BRE <laughs> and there was like a stack of thirty two X's and a stack of Jaguars, both brand new in the box. And there was a sign on the wall that says, "You pick twenty five bucks." Wow. You buy one of each? No. I don't know why. I, cause I, I Actually, based on what year that was, like for, there was a period of time where I didn't have a Genesis because uh, mm -hmm. I gave away my Genesis. And so I wonder if I didn't have my Genesis anymore when this happened. Because I, def, I definitely got the Jaguar, like I said, but I didn't get a 32X. But that might have been why is maybe it, you know, because I didn't have a... Uh, Genesis anymore. Plus, the 32X didn't have a pack-in game, so I would have still had to come up with a game. Right. Like at least I could take the the Jaguar home and, and rock out with some Cybermorph. Although, I will say that, in my opinion, Cybermorph is a better game than people give it credit for. I think people think that it's not the right kind of game. But it's not as good as that one uh, game fan review would make you think that it is. Yeah. Um... All right, almost we're almost to the end here. World International Trading. I never seen this ad either, but hey, look, there's a, a Neo Geo CD. Ah, oh, yeah, and a Japanese. That's Saturn. the. I think that's the that's the first version I think of the Neo Geo CD, right? That's like the the front loader. I had a top loading oh, right. Neo Geo CD for a while, but is that the CD is it like the CDX or something like that? No, it was still just called a Neo Geo CD or CDZ. I think it was. I don't know. Um, so the, the one that has a faster loading speed. Yeah, but it's like 2x instead of 1x or something like that. Like right. It's still ridiculously Which, slow. Which, I mean, it's it's slow, but it, I mean, that's a that's an improvement. Yeah. I mean, it's twice as fast, right? Yeah. Uh, and then here you go. Uh, well, nope, never mind. I thought it was last page. It's not. We have one more page to go. <laughs> uh, World of Games. I don't know... Uh, it's kind of interesting just because normally I'm reading magazines from like 1991 or something. And it's like for the most part, except for like BRE and mm. Chips and Bits, it's like all new vendors now. Um, yeah. Game Express from New York, New York. There was a Game Express in LA too, but obviously that was a different one. Not a very good layout. <laughs> I look at the layouts just because uh, Tim Lindquist, you know, from from Game Fan did, did a lot of those layouts. And you can mm. certainly tell some of them that he didn't do. Um, PO'd. Have you played PO'd? I haven't. Well, didn't you know, that get I, ported? I, on the 3DO, I think I did play it for a little bit. Yeah. I feel like that. I did that get ported to the PlayStation it, or ported to the Saturn? I feel like that got ported somewhere. I don't think so. I feel like it was. It never got ported. <laughs> I bet you there's a PC version. Hey, check it out. Forum Tattoo Dude's wife is here. Ah. Hey. And thanks for the shout out. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Uh, all right, this this is yes for sure the last page. Uh, Interact ad. You know, they kind of they made ad. the uh, like the SG Pro pads and things like that. Uh, here's the <laughs> SN Pro pad, PS Pro pad. Not, I mean, I've I've played around with an SN Pro pad. They're not the worst, you know, as as third party controllers go. Um, yeah, you know. Interact was always hit and miss. Yeah, I guess this handy pack thing looks kind of stupid. I mean, yes, especially the little joystick for the uh, for the yeah. D pad. Yeah, but I mean, basically every single one of those things for the Game Boy was stupid. Yeah, anything like that. I don't think I ever. It, it, it was impossible for them to look good. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think I, I never owned a single Game Boy accessory, unless I mean I, I had a a case or something to, you know, put it in mm -hmm. if that counts. But I mean, I never bought 
any kind of like light or, or any of this kind of weirdo stuff for it. Uh, and then on the back cover is uh, Venom and Spider-Man in Separation Anxiety for the Super Nintendo and Genesis. The follow-up to Maximum Carnage, oh. I assume. Yeah. Which, you know, I, I recently played Maximum Carnage, and it has music by Green Jelly. Yeah. Remember that band Green Dude, Jelly? Dude, that, that was one of the first... I wonder if it's like a collector's item. Like That was one of the first CDs I ever bought... And it was actually green jello. Like Oh, green jello. And they had to change it? Yeah. They got I think they got sued by whoever makes jello. <laughs> and they jello. had to change their name to, to Green Jelly. But my C D was actually uh, you know, it said green jello on it. It's yeah. it's probably not a collector's item. But uh in the chat, Johnny Nintendo says he wanted to say thanks for making uh, the Super Nintendo and Genesis soundtrack videos. He listens to them to fall asleep at night. That's pretty cool. That's great. Um, for some reason, nobody really watches, no one's really watched the PC Engine one. It, it's almost like it didn't get, like, pushed out to subscribers or something. It has, like... You should, you should tweet it. it has, I think I did tweet it. I think I tweet everything. Hmm. Um, or re- re- tweet it again. No, I don't like to bother people, but I just... To me, it's the best one, and so it, like it, it only bothers me for that reason that like nobody's watched it really because yeah, like, it, I think that one turned out the best. So, um, so anyway, that's it, right? That's uh, there's EGM two from uh, December of nineteen ninety five. I thought that was a pretty good. I like that one. I think so too. You know, I don't have that many there's copies a lot of, good stuff. of uh, EGM two, and it was it was just cool to see a lot of early PlayStation games in there. So, but there was a lot of other cool yeah. stuff in there as well. So, and it's cool to see like that focus coverage on specific games, you know, for several pages, like an entire walkthrough. Yeah. yeah, I mean, you could definitely see why, you know, if you had bought the the sort of the bundle subscription offer they had, like the two magazines would would complement each other. Right. Yeah. Oh, well, we got five dollars from Jerry Cox, who said, "Sup, Chris and Corey." Oh. Yeah. What's up, Jerry? Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, Mujanga shows the green jelly with a with a was that where the umlaut was was over the Y? Yeah. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I feel like it or over the E. I don't know. Uh, why is this I don't know this this surfboard sixty nine person in the chat keeps talking about Scary Cat. Scary Cat was this person that used to hang out in my Discord and I don't know where they went. Um <laughs> It's too bad because they were hilarious, but um <laughs> Scary Cat's lawyer. Yeah. Won't be the last. Yeah. I can't say what, but probably the hardest I ever laughed hanging out in my Discord was something that Scary Cat did. And it was not <laughs> something I can repeat on a live stream. Anyway. Um so yeah, I don't know. That's all I mean, you got anything else you want to say? That's all I got. Um like I said, I this no, was um I mean, I was really I happy it, I to. Was um, I was really happy to get this one. This is a cool, uh, not just because I think it made for a good uh, read through, but honestly, like this is a magazine that I'm just excited to um, to own. So, um, and then yeah, later you know if anybody if anybody wants to have a bonus live stream and wants to talk about stereo review from. Uh, <laughs> March of 1987. I don't know if I mentioned it yet. Really good blank blank cassette tape buyer's guide in that one. The lab um, test, the Kyocera cassette deck. Kyocera was, that's Sony, right? I don't even know. I'm pretty sure because I remember the Kyocera. I just cell remember them making, for, yeah, that's what I was going to say. I, don't, I didn't know they made anything besides cell phones, Kyocera. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had a, I had fun. I, you know, when I obviously when I got this, I read through it, and it's just you know, there's a lot of cool stuff in here from back in the day. So um, yeah. this was more like a magazine for like audio files that were you know spending a lot of money, you know, going to like specialty stereo shops and putting together like mm-hmm. higher end stereo systems. So yeah, um, which is certainly not what anybody I knew was doing, you know, when I was that age. So yeah, yeah. Uh, Brian North is wondering when when my read through is going to be. Um, I'm not sure yet. It depends that like, we'll just take a, like, we'll see what our free time looks like when I get my second issue and then we'll present them both and then we'll pick one. Yeah. I guess. 
I, I, think, I think that'll be I don't, cool. I don't know what day yet, though, yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, all right. Well, I think that's probably a good place to end things for the evening, then, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that sounds good to me. I'm just... I'm going to go to bed in just a few minutes here. I'm... I mean, yeah. Wasn't expecting to get get so tired here towards the end. Yeah, I mean, I I need to have something to eat. But then I get I get I my first to to vaccination too. shot tomorrow morning. Oh wow! Well, congratulations. Um, the second the second one might be a little. That one kind of knocked me on my butt for a couple of days. The second one, but the yeah. first one I had no um, side effect from the first one at all. So, um, yeah, and. Uh, Joe says good night. Good night back. Thanks for hanging out for so long, Joe. And he was bringing a yeah. lot of facts into the chat, which I always appreciate. <laughs> and and uh, butt crack pr- predictions. That was funny, man. That <laughs> I should I should cut that out of the video and like put a, you know put it up on Twitter or something. That was hilarious. <laughs> uh, I saw he tweeted about it. So if you just oh, like well. if you cut that out of the video, he could always respond with it. Yeah, I don't know that how to do that, funny. but I'll figure it out. Without downloading the entire video, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Well, anyway, thank you to everybody for uh, for hanging out, and as always, thanks for the you know super chats and whatnot. Uh, much appreciated. Um, he swears he didn't know. I believe you. Um, and we'll see. I don't know when I'll uh, stream again. I'm gonna try. I already know. Uh, I want to upload another video to this channel. I already know what it's gonna be. So uh, I just have to. Uh, I just have to make it. But. Uh, and hopefully but my wife is going to work a uh, too late. of yeah hopefully there will, there will eventually be a playthrough of uh, chrono trigger that would be cool but what i was going to say is my wife's going to work 2 days a week now so i should be able to start making uh, flashback <laughs> videos again <laughs> that that, that was kind of the main problem uh, anyway, um, <laughs> all right. So uh, we're gonna end the stream now. So uh, again, uh, thank you and good night, and I'll see you next time. All right, later.